Hello, it's Dean Allen here, and I'm back in one of my favourite towns in South Africa, Craddock. I'm at Maitland Beach, which is about 30 kilometres from the centre of Port Elizabeth. Good morning from the beautiful Founders Lodge here in the Eastern Cape. I could wake up to this view every morning for the rest of my life. I'm here at Gray High School, one of the oldest schools in the country. I'm here to write the history of conservation in the Eastern Cape and we moved from Cape Town about a month ago and we couldn't be happier. People told me it was going to be the windy city but as you can see today there's not a breath of breeze in the air. It's also known as the friendly city and that I can certainly testify. The people here are magnificent. So I look forward to sharing with you over the coming months um, the history of um, this town and this region. Relax it down. Never mind your liver, get to Gino Spot. Get to Gino Spot. Gino Spot. Have a laugh, have a giggle, and exercise your middle. Have a Gino shot. Gino shot. Get to Gino Spot. Gino Spot. Get to Gino Spot. Gino Spot. Have a laugh, have a giggle, and exercise your middle. Get to Gino Spot. gentlemen welcome indeed to a Gino spot this lovely evening we've had a little bit of rain a little bit of rain we're hoping for more indeed we uh, pe needs more rain and so does the of course all the surrounding areas in uh, in the eastern cape we need the drain and so we hope we're going to do it i'm going to actually got to write a song a rain dawn song with our, our mate my mate uh, of course from the uh, the samson from the from the uh, weather the weather services we're going to get him on and 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 uh, make sure that we know what's going on with regard to day zero which is already here apparently it is here but everybody's buying tanks i wish i wish that i had invested in jojo tanks just uh, about a year ago or so that would have been wonderful uh see there's people online already tonight because tonight is a very very special show it's a bit of a different show tonight indeed we've gone we've gone on a bit of a uh, a tangent and we've got uh, dean allen in tonight who's going to be talking about all sorts of stuff let me tell you um a little bit a couple of teasers you know dean dean is a, is is a multi he's multifaceted he's a he's a lecturer he was a lecturer he was a conservation he's into conservation he's, he's a writer he's written all these books behind me look at them Look at them, thousands of books. 
<laughs> he's got, and of course, he's a historian because he's into the into the history, and I, and I love that's what that's what interested me in the right in the beginning was the uh, the the history because the history of the Eastern Cape specifically is what he's into, and I uh, um, and isn't that that's the best thing that can possibly be on Gino Spot at this particular time. And also, he's, he's just, just recently become a social media guru with a video, a video that's gone completely viral. And it's and by viral, I mean like insanely viral, 15 million, 16 million, 100 million, million, million views. Uh, I- incredible a- a- amount of views that that, that this, uh, this video has got. We're going to chat to him about that, whether that's good or bad. We don't know. We're going to find out. And we've, we hope, I hope that you guys have got something to drink and something to, um, you know, something to sip on while, we, while we're talking because we're going to have a lovely conversation tonight. And, and uh, we've got some uh, we've got an interesting start. We're going to start it differently. We're going to do it differently. And, uh, and Gary's been working like a maniac. In fact, I think we've, if, if, if it's just to carry on, I think we'd carry on. I'd be at each other's throats. Ekamale hey, Ellis, lovely to, lovely to see you as well. Hi, all in, very involved in PE history as well. Of course, but from the library, she would be here now. <laughs> Dean's looking at, it's called wide eyes already because she's going to ask difficult questions <laughs> lavender, lavender lovely name what a lovely name lavender one boy thank you a tuning for nairobi kenya excellent i think a, possibly our first person from kenya that's every and i don't know if i can uh, pronounce that first name michael um M-Kelele, M-Kelele, Lu sounds closer. and a shout out from from i didn't see that where was that uh <laughs> makanda makanda oh it's the grahamstown excellent uh, it's it's tepe it's a tepe uh and and uh, that was uh, of course one of his students there we go it's at siput in Monroe, lovely to have you on board as well. We've got, we've got lots of comments coming through. It's going to be good fun. And keep those comments coming. Keep them coming in. We've got the Englishman in PE. An Englishman in PE. We're going to find out. He's the man who came all the way from England when everybody was going out of South Africa to England. And then not only that, he didn't stop there. No, he came all the way from Cape Town to PE against the flow, you know, <laughs> because he believes in PE. And that's fantastic. We're going to chat to him as to why and how and who and why and what. And uh, Wendy Swan, lovely to see you as well. Uh, Gina, hopefully you should receive around 16 millimeters of rain on Thursday. We hope so. 30 millimeters in Corrido, which is great for the Churchill Dam. I hope so. That, that'll be fantastic. And I hope it's going to fill up all the tanks across the game so, so we won't have any more. And there won't be any more water problems at all. Gail Sturgis, lovely to see you. Andrew, and you're watching from Busmans. Van Busmans 8. Yes, I learned to, to uh, windsurf on that river. Bushman's River, such a lovely wide lagoon and such good people there in Kenton on sea, eh? Proper Low Albany there, Kenton, Salem, the guys are out, proper all, they're all like, you know what, they talk like this, Dean, and they, <laughs> and they play bridge and they uh, love their tennis and they love to uh, sit around and have tea. Indeed, Paul Thompson, lovely. Oh, keep Dean off the cricket field, he says. <laughs> We'll find out about that. Ciao, Gabriella. Gabriella Alangileri. Oh, oh, Pepucho, all the way from PE. <laughs> Grizel Hart, Goth Webster. Well, we got lots of people. Ladies and gentlemen, send me some comments. Tell me what you're drinking. Tell me where you're watching from, and I'll sing your comments for you. We're going to start out with a little song just to get you warmed up. That's right, because that's the way we do it on Gino's Spot. I've chosen a song that's uh, by Evoid. Evoid, a South African band. Uh, I think they're from East London. Maybe someone could tell us. I, I seem to remember Evoid were from East London. And they played a whole lot of times at Shepherd's Bush in England. So we thought it's a good tie-in. I, I see Rita Volman enjoying my show oh, with Leslie Young. I see Block Blame Me, Rob Blame Me, supporting Dean from the beautiful West Country. I think the West Country is, don't know, Birmingham, maybe, don't know, no, that's the Midlands, I don't know. Oh, no, shadows, Lucy Jane from Scotland, Scotland, I wish I could speak like a Scottish person. Mary, Mary, lovely. A cup of coffee, 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 that's right, they've got their goes to lay. Lions, Irene Jacconi, the G-spot, that's right, that's a little rude. Oh, Wendy Thompson, all right, good evening, 
she says. Ian Olivier, nice to see you, Pam Golding Estates. Here we go. Lucy James is hiding. Hope you are well. I'll pass on the message to him sitting there. And Peter Ross, greetings from Josie. Peter Ross can play the guitar. He does all that shadow stuff. And Des Mahoney howls it. And Iris Winston Bottom from Jay Bay. Just up the road. Don Taylor, Hygino, and Gary. Gary sitting, dumping there. Marjorie, a Cooper. Good luck to all involved in tonight's show. How's a good love from Tracy and Torrin? What a lovely girl she is. That's well, that's right, Lucy Jane and Brian Wilkinson. Also, Hannah Porter, Kate Picky from Stellenbosch, and Blue Water Bay. Abidemi Lazore, Abidemi, Abidemi, I like that name too, Abidemi. Listening from PE, excellent. Gleberheni, Gleberha. It's everybody gets it wrong, you know. They, 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 I know, they, I know. We, 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 English people, we sickle with this, with the clicks. You know, let me, let me just a quick explanation. Up at the top of the mouth, that's where it comes from. Like you, like you. That's the one. You got to get that click, and then you say a G with it, like a Gleberha. That's it. I mean, it's freeborn, how's it free? free if, if Boyd was from Brackburn, <laughs> no, there was. There, come on, freeborn. There was. You know, you freeborn was from Queenstown. He's our he's our resident Geno Spot coin specialist. We got to have you on again, freeborn. We got to see what's going on. Uh, I I believe, do believe there was a tie into East London somewhere. Camilla Ellison had Epi's pizza. Oh yes, the nose pizza. Epi was on our show last week. It was the, the nose pizza. Fantastic pizzas. All right, Jane Holden, wine on the couch, beautiful. I've got myself a little, little, uh, uh, a little gin and tonic. Thank you very much, Fitch and Lees, and a thank you to our sponsors, of course. Spa, you'll see them above us. They have been unbelievable support, and uh, as a community brand, they have done wonders for my show, as as well as uh, so many different things that they've they've got involved in, including uh, what I'm wearing now, the the Spa Women's Challenge, which is uh, this this uh, year. It's all about the GBV, it's, uh, trying to bring uh, awareness about gender gender based violence. Uh, 10k. Uh, this is this was the 10k Women's Challenge. Obviously, it's a it's a virtual run on the 3rd of September. Please make sure you sign up. You can sign up. Hashtag I rise. That's what we use. The hashtag I rise and the and the, the Spa Virtual Challenge. Look it up. The Spa Virtual Challenge. If Gary can probably find a, a, a link there somewhere as well. Um, uh, just sign in, and you go and look for your. Uh, uh, you, you go and uh, sign in online, and you'll get yourself a T-shirt and a buff. And look at all my stuff I got. I got it in. I got it in advance. I'm ready to rock for third of September. So it's coming up, and and but, but bookings are now open. Uh, registration is now open for that. So don't forget. Also, we'll be having Yolanda Bukani on soon. I've got to get her on the show too. She is one of our, my fellow brand ambassadors for Spa too, uh, and it's been fantastic ride with uh, Stapes and the guys for Spa. So thank you. To to them absolutely thank you to them uh, as well as of course our amobia our internet provider and um and fat cats for our lovely little child that we've got tonight thank you very much grace she brought something around and then we've got uh, fitch and leads of course who've been helping us out with a with a giveaways at the end of the show so at the end of the show you can win a case of fitch and leads we will post it to you no matter where you are i don't know about Nairobi, but we can give it a go <laughs> we'll give it a go ladies and gentlemen i think it's just about time to start our show in invite our amazing, multifaceted, smorgasbord of information, Mr. Dean Allen. <laughs> well, let's let's have a look at see you and have a little introduction. Ooh, welcome to the show. Now is your time to shine. You're gonna have a lucky chat tonight. Welcome, Dean Allen. Let's see where we are. We've got the mics on. Everything is right. You never know what's going to happen, Dean. You never know. On a live stream, anything can happen at any time. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. Fantastic to have you here in PE. No, what a joy. What a joy to be yes. here. And, uh, and cheers, cheers. cheers to everybody out there. Thank cheers. you. Cheers and to everyone. Thank you, to, thank you for joining us tonight. You know, yeah. tonight is... Uh, 
It's been, you know, I think we've, 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 it's, been a, it's been quite a journey with you. Yeah. Uh, because, um, let, me, let me tell you, Dean knows a lot and has learned a lot in the last, uh, last couple of weeks or months about social media as well. Uh, with, I mean, it's just, uh, your, your brand is kind of exploding here. Yeah, you've just moved to PE all the way from Cape Town. Oh my God! What are, you, what are you busy with at the moment? What are you doing here in BE? Well, talk about being in the right place at the right time, Gina. I mean, this is great to be on this show. I mean, yeah. I mean you're just a legend in BE. I mean, everybody said you had to be on the Gino Spot show. So to get on the G we're, Spot. We're on the, I'm on the G Spot, but we won't go there tonight. Um, no, no, it's fantastic to be in PE. We, we moved here about two months ago. Um, been invited to, to write, we'll talk about it, to write The History of Conservation by Mr. Adrian Garner, yeah. which is an absolute honour. Fantastic. So, uh, yeah, no, oh, as, yeah. as people are moving to Cape Town, as you know, from all around the country, I decided to go against the flow and, uh, <laughs> and come to the Eastern Cape. I know. This is the real place, isn't it? it? Is, the real people. It, it's, it's really, it's, it, and it's, uh, I think that PE has got so much, um, there's, there's still so much to give, you know. Yeah. And, and, and we've got to get together. This is what the show's about, it's just trying, trying to get people together, get people positive about PE. And, and I see um, already you're talking about, uh, to people like Denise Van Hastien from the, from the, uh, the, the chamber and, and, uh, and various people who are trying to just push forward, you know, yeah. despite the politics. I mean, as a historian, it's one of the original towns, of course, yeah. and there's, uh, just walking around along the seafront in the CBD, I mean, you can just sense how this was, yeah. it is an amazing place, but for me, and we'll talk about it, it's the people. It's yeah. known as a friendly city, it is. and it really is the truth. And I promise you, every time the Cape Tonians say, but it's very windy, Ah, no, I'm telling you, Cape Town's got some wind, but we've got the Proper. friendly people here. Yeah. Um, and it's just great to be here. I brought my young family here, and uh, they, um, they, you know, they love it as well, which is fantastic. And uh, mm -hmm. we've just been welcomed wherever we've gone, and yeah. which is fantastic. Yeah. And uh, it's, got a, it's called a city, but it feels like a town to me, and it's, yeah. Um, yeah. it's lovely. There's so much for me to do here. I can't wait to get started, you know. <laughs> there is a part of it. I saw you, I saw you um, so sitting in Maitlands, and you've got the most beautiful beaches. Beautiful. In the most, it, is, it is a wonderful place. Yeah. But now, I think what, what we're going to do is we're going to switch things around a bit tonight. Because you, you, we've got we've got a a, a, a whole um, uh, array of people online tonight, and let me just say I want to say welcome to all the people that, that Dean's friends and Dean's uh, followers that are, that are coming to watch Thank as you. well, and and of course our, our normal Gino Spot bunch, the bunch of hoodlums that are always here. <laughs> And we love you. We love you, and thank you so much for your support. Um, and honestly, if there's any any questions, anything you wanna you wanna put up, just put up the comments. Gary can uh, Gary's got, got the comments there, and he can just bring them on the screen every now and again. We'll probably we'll probably hit them in batches because I think they are quite a lot. In fact, we might not just want to look at just just a couple to say say hi there uh, for now. Let's see who's online. Uh, it's it's uh, 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 oh, Robert Allen. Hello, Rob. Yeah, nice, nice to hear from you. Yeah, no, good man. Where's, good where's man. Rob? Rob's up in, up in Bloom. Oh, and and oh, there's, yeah. there's Rennie. Rennie, what, Rennie Ferrer is one of my greatest supporters. And look, she's calling you from Portugal, which is fantastic. Epa! No, lovely to see you. Thank you. <laughs> Epa! Thank you. And there we go, Lisa williams Brainers from GQ. Uh, I like the... I'm, I'm getting used to that GQ, uh, you know, the, the, the name. I'm getting... I, I quite like the idea that it's... Uh, that it's 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 a blend of a plant. No, I can no, I can say GQ, of course. Yes. But uh, I mean, the yeah. name thing for me. No, I'm not even going to go yeah. there with the clicks. I mean, I, I I'm absolutely useless anyway. You can probably hear. By the way, I've got to I've got to say to you, you didn't know where the West Country was. No, I don't. I don't I'm not. I'm not I'm very good with that stuff. I, look, I know a lot of the guys on are from the West Country. My 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 football team's Bristol City. It's the oh, good old Bristol. West Country, Bristol and Bath. I'm from a little place called. Uh, Called Minehead, um, near Minehead, okay. uh, on the on the West Somerset sort of coast, opposite opposite Cardiff, opposite Wales. Okay. We won't talk about the Welsh. Oh, Welsh. We're on the right side of the, Tom Jones on the right side <laughs> of the Bristol Channel. But uh, no, the West Country it's lovely. It's uh, I I think it's like the garden route of England. Um, oh, wow. So it's, it's a beautiful part of the country. But we're known as country bumpkins. So this yeah. accent is... Is it uh, south? It's, 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 it's west, south southwest. 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 So you've okay. heard of, you know Cornwall, of course, and yes. Devon. Well, Somerset okay. makes up the three counties oh, wow. of the southwest. Okay. Um, so in the summer, we're just... Our little lanes are just packed with tourists oh, coming yeah. down to the beaches and okay. the stuff. So, but it's a, no, a lovely part of the world. And, uh, is no, the weather better down there? Or is it yeah, it was certainly, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's certainly better. Lucy's watching from Scotland. It's certainly better than Scotland. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh, but um, Scotland's got some out there. It's also beautiful out there. <laughs> no, the weather's pretty good back there, I must admit, but uh, I'm... Uh, I'm uh... <laughs> they see no Scotland. That's all that matters, Dean. 
<laughs> I tell you. <laughs> well, exactly, exactly. You know, but I will, I will say, uh, once I realised that I needed the sun on my back, even the West Country didn't have enough sunshine. A lot of oh, my really? friends will know that. I just, even from a small lad, I used yeah. to just follow the sun. As soon as I went to Spain on holidays of ten years, oh, and I realised that the sun was shining above those clouds, <laughs> my life was changed forever. So I was always going to live in the sunshine. I must admit, okay. but it is home. It is home. Well, I uh, hence, hence South Africa. I'm sure yeah, you know that's yeah. why that's why I came to. But we're gonna we're gonna do first of all get a little bit of a getting to know you session with Dean before we get dig into his historian lecturer thing you know which is always it's always the thing you get interviewed about of I'm course, sure, of course. I'm sure. so um, the the biggest risk that you've ever taken Dean ah well that's a very good question I think it was really when I when I um, I know my mum's probably watching now and she remembers the time I was 26 when I went back to university yeah. and I had a very steady office job but I was bored out of my head okay. and um, we'll talk about how I what came to that. What uh, I was. Do you know, I worked in a bank for four years. I mean, I'm useless. I'm useless at maths. Bank? They, I, was, I was that bad at banking, they didn't even let me in front of the customers. I was upstairs <laughs> on the machine and all we did, me and my friend Richard, all we did was muck around all the time. The day I handed in my notice from the bank, the, the bank manager said, I think it's a good idea, didn't you? <laughs> So that was yeah. never going to work, but um, I, uh, I I went to university at the age of 26, 27, so I right. gave up that steady job, and yeah. uh, it was a risk, yeah, because you were giving sure. up the income and stuff like that, yeah. but here I am sitting here, and it's changed my life forever. Yeah. I'm the first person in my family to go to university, so I kind of had to yeah. break wow. the mould. I had to explain to my parents why I was doing this, yeah. and uh, I didn't really know what I was going to do, yeah. but lucky yeah. enough, it was back in 97, and back then... They, uh, they paid you a little bit of money to go to oh, university. Oh, nice. And you read, you got a grant, <laughs> which is incredible. Yeah. Now, the students come out with 10,000 in debt, and I probably yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't, have had the, wouldn't have had the courage to do it. But then, yeah. it was still a massive risk to do okay. that. As an older guy, to go back to university. Yeah. So, probably that's... And, 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 and that fear, I mean, as an older person going to university, again, you, 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 you think, gee, was, can I still do this? Because you, know? yeah. Yeah. you haven't stayed, you haven't had your, your nose in the books for, for five, six years. Listen, since. I, was, I was Mr. Average at school. I, I, say this to the, I say this at my talks and to my students. I never got an A throughout my school career. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I came out. And because I suppose... You I shouldn't gave, say that, you no, know. I shouldn't say that. Oh, an historian. <laughs> But I was obviously a late developer, Gino, you know, yes. because then I went to university and I, I came top of the year because, you know what, I knew how to play the system. I knew how to yes. work hard and play hard. Yes. And that was and how to do the balance in life. Yeah. And I think sometimes as an 18-year-old, they don't understand the no. balance, you know. And <laughs> thankfully, I was, yeah, I made the most of it, which was an incredible. And thanks to the support of all the people around yeah. me. I'm, yeah, I'm sitting here now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because uh, that, that's, so, so that gives you an idea of the risk. The risk factor involved here is clearly not scared to jump off that cliff. I mean, to, to be a writer as well and to, to do this, what you're doing now as well, we'll, we'll talk about that later, but that is also a hell of a risk. In case you didn't know. <laughs> Just watch what I say tonight. It's, okay, it's a risky it. business, this, <laughs> this stuff. Um, the hardest that you've ever worked. Well, I've been working with Gary over the last few days preparing this show, and I tell you what, that guy works hard, and uh, he's been keeping me going, I'm telling you. Um, yeah, no, what we do actually as, yeah. as entrepreneurs, as, yeah. as entertainers, as speakers, yeah. you really do work because you've got to yeah. hustle all the time. Yeah. You've got to get your material together, but you've also got to get your audience. Yeah. Um, so it's really hard. Because you moment. do a lot of speaking engagements. Uh, as well, speaking so yeah, engagements, yeah, yeah. yeah and I, I still engage with schools and universities yes, and things like that. But if, if I think about really when I was really focused and dedicated, yeah. probably during the PhD. Now, yeah. if anybody ever says to you a PhD is a test of intelligence, well, of course it is, but it's a test of discipline. Yeah. And I tell you what, that thing sat on my shoulder for five years. Yeah. And I, uh, once I started, I had to finish it. Yes. Um, but no, talk about hard work. And, it was, and, and I, I gave up a lot. There was a lot of sacrifice there as well. So if anybody does two PhDs in their life, they need a head's <laughs> test in the tank. But no, that was a hard period. Because you've been period. told about the first one already, you know. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> Classic. Okay, so uh, most uncomfortable place, uh, uncomfortable place you've ever slept? Well, that's in South Africa, and I remember this. Yeah. I, um, when I first came here, um, I fell in love with Cape Town, and uh, I would get invitations to go on hikes and go places, and they would say, right, let's take this Englishman up the mountain. So Table Mountain was there, and, I, and, and they, the hiking club of South Africa had the hut, and they were the only people allowed, I don't know if it's still the, the, the case yeah. today, the only people allowed to sleep on Table Mountain overnight. Yeah. And I got an invitation to oh, go with right. them. But unfortunately this day, it was wet, it was misty. I couldn't see a hand in front of my face. Yeah. And when we got to the hut, and I was already miserable and fed up anyway, yeah. Yeah. they said, because you're the newcomer, we'll let you sleep outside tonight. 
I was outside. You. I was outside in the wet, the mist, the damp, uh, on top of Table Mountain in a sleeping bag. And I could, I, I honestly say, I couldn't wait to get down off of that mountain. So that's probably the. That's probably yes, the yeah, no, that's pretty epic. Uh, outside, no, no, I'm not a big one for sleeping under the I'm stars. Not big, yeah. I'm not. I'm not into camping really. It's yeah. got to, you've got to have a nice bed and a shower and a. Is it windy? It was a wind, it was just wet. I just oh, woke up and yeah. I remember the drips were nah. off my nose. And they said, did you enjoy yourself? And of course, me being oh, polite, yes. oh, it was wonderful. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Never again. Oh, it was lovely to Never sleep again. under the stars. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, the biggest adrenaline rush you've ever had in your life? Oh, wow, well, I've had a few. Um, but uh, I, think, I think when I first came here, I was trying, I was into everything. I wanted to do stuff. And I ended up throwing myself out of a plane with, with someone attached to me. Oh, okay. I didn't trust myself to pull the cord. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, we did a we did a skydive yeah. from twelve thousand feet, and the funny thing was, um, the guy I was that in the zone, and obviously my body mind kicked in and said, "You're not jumping out of this plane." I remember holding onto the plane, and the guy had to beat my arms to get me off. I didn't oh, even really? when I watched the video back, I didn't even feel that. You really remember it? And he said to me, "Do you want to do a somersault when you come out of the plane?" I said, "What the heck? I'm jumping out of the plane. Let's do it." <laughs> but that 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 was incredible, and I always remember the silence when the when the shoot went up. The rush was incredible, yeah. the silence, and then it kicked in. Wow. My legs were dangling ten thousand feet, <laughs> across, uh, and that was really the longest. Probably Probably three or four minutes of my life, but what a <laughs> what a thing! I wouldn't do it now, of course. That was not, back in the day. No, but once you have children, I think it's a little bit of a change. And yeah, I think yeah, because yeah, life gets a bit more precious and whatever. But yeah. you, 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 I mean, you, yeah. you're daft, aren't you? Yeah. I shouldn't. I should have known better, really. But no, no. It's, it's but my friend used to come and visit me every every year, and every year I used to take him on one of these things. And the poor guy, he hated it. And I'd say, right, we're going to jump off a bridge. We're going to jump out of a plane. <laughs> and we ended up doing that. But uh, no, I. Why can't, God, why can't I just have a bri with Dean? It was so nice to just, just sit around and have a glass of I know, wine. the pool. He always wants to go jumping out of things. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. Um, but uh, it was, is, is there, uh, I just, it just made me think of the, of the time, the, you know, that first time when you realise you've actually got children and a wife and a thing that, should I really do this, yeah. you know, hit on your head on a, on a, on a, on a motorcycle around a track or a, you know. <laughs> no, 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 this is it. But I must admit that moment when that door opened, I thought, what the hell am I doing here? You know? I mean, this is just crazy. <laughs> and as I said, I was going to hang on for dear life and that guy had to beat my arm off. But yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm proud to say I, I did it. Did it we, we also did the bridge swing, which is not oh, the big bungee. King swing. Okay. Yeah, but... Uh, uh, that was that was crazy. It's like jumping off a bridge, to, you yeah, know, to your yeah. death. You see the ground rush up, and <laughs> and I just thought, what am I doing? Yeah, you know, you're pushing your luck, really. Yeah, yeah. No, South Africa offers those opportunities, you know, so you have to do it. It does, it does. And they've got that lovely old Wendy Swan. All no, Wendy's online, and she's uh, the, they do that uh, treetop canopy tour. That's much safer. Okay, and very nice. Okay, Wendy, very I'll come nice. with you and do that. So yes, it sounds yes. a lot more pleasant. Now. They do that up there. I know. Okay, last one. Last one for now. We've got another five later on, which we'll do towards the end. Um, the most important chance encounter that you ever had. Um, chance encounter, and that's another reason why I'm sitting here. Um, would you believe uh, I went to the gym in November 1995 in Taunton? Again, I was working in a boring office job, and I struck up a conversation with a lady at the water fountain, at the water machine in the gym. And she, this accent came out, and she was Afrikaans. Her name was yeah. Van der Merwe. She yeah. happened to be a dentist working in Taunton. And she is the reason why I'm here, because she actually said, go back to university. She said, come to Cape Town and see South Africa. And it changed my world. Wow. So I, I didn't know what I was doing in my mid-twenties. I was kind of drifting. I was living for the weekends, my sport, yeah. you know, and stuff like that. But that changed my life. Going to the gym that day and meeting that lady and uh, coming to South Africa, because it wasn't even on my, on my radar. Agenda, yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't even really know where you know, Cable Jesus. Mountain, Cape Town or anything. It was it was a country that I kind of heard of, but it wasn't there. Okay. I watched I watched the, the sort of Springbok final in 95, and that was interesting yeah. because a few months before, I realised that this country was special and was going through something different. So to meet an Afrikaner in my hometown with this yes. exotic accent. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> did she say Fond Fonden? <laughs> she did, yeah, I think she did. With an F. <laughs> but that was, that was incredible. And and I, I, remember, I remember thinking, I really like these people because there was a group of them working there, and yeah. that, that's when I sort of found my tribe I've used that term quite often but I felt I felt yeah. really at home with these people wow. they live life to the fullest every weekend yeah. they go off they go off to Paris or they go skiing yes. or whatever always on a budget because South yeah. Africans yes. do things on a budget Proper. and uh, and I just they, they just bring me along and I thought these people are living their life they are really making the most out of every opportunity. Yeah. And they also inspired me because they were, they were brilliant. They were doctors and dentists and they were traveling the world. And that's when I thought, well, maybe I can do yeah. something like that. 
So that's the, that's the encounter that really did change my life. Oh man! Well, I know that we, we've got um, we, we've got to head into now the, uh, the the meat of the interview, the US, I suppose, yes. and we find out why <laughs> you, came, you, you you eventually got here. You said you you, you found this lady. It's a good um, uh, segue into into how you came to South Africa. Um, I mean, we'll go into the. I don't, I'm not sure if we should go re- way back into the history. Maybe we should um, as to where you, where you were born, where you, where you went to school, um, that sort of thing. Yeah, no, it's an important part of my story, really. I was born in a in in a in a, a town called Minehead in West Somerset. I'm from a little village called Willerton. I'm my mum and dad's watching now, and yes. uh, they still the West in, Country, the West Country, yeah, the West Good. Country. You know, I know where that is. You know, you know where it is. Um, <laughs> And uh, no, no, it's part of my grounding. A lovely rural area, um, mm. simple kind of life, really. Um, but I went to a school with twelve hundred people. It's a state What's school. A big school. Yeah, it was a lot of competition, yeah. and Jeez. you kind of got lost. And I was, like I said, I was Mr. Co-ed. Average. Go- go- co-ed. 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 Yeah. yeah. And uh, I was Mr. Average at school. I, yeah. I liked my sport, but I was I was one of the youngest in the year. So you kind of get left behind. Yeah. I'm born in July, you see. So uh, September's the start of the yes. year. So you you're almost a year behind some of the kids yes. in the. And anyway, I, I, I went on, I did A-levels, did okay, and I went and worked in the, in the bank locally. But yeah. that background, I was at, the mo- at that moment, I wasn't ready to go to university or see the world. I was quite happy plodding along, living for, as most Brits do, for the yes. Saturday night, for the sport and their yes. night out. And, and, you know, I got my car and I was quite happy with life. <laughs> but I think your first crossroads in life, Gino, I don't know if you know, yeah. is you, it, sort of in your mid-20s, when yeah. you realise, okay, the novelty's wearing out now, yeah. but what's next? Yeah, and that's when I met Van der Merwe, and okay. she moved me to wow. South Africa, yeah. and she gave me the confidence. In fact, I think she yeah. filled in the form for university. Oh, okay, really? Uh, yeah, <laughs> wow. yeah, and she said, well, why don't you go? So the whole the, uh, the whole thing kind of developed like that, yeah, and um, yeah. so the background, I was I was almost, I needed to come out of my shell. Well, I was, I was uh, you know, my, my wife, I know, I know my wife is going to be analysing you already, because she's a, she works with, uh, with children, and, and she's uh, always, uh, and, uh, Especially with ADD kids like myself, you know, and and, and children that, that uh, you were saying younger, so perhaps not as not as uh, as mature as, as as the kids in you know all the kids in the class, and and always on the back foot. So, uh, do you think that was a thing? Yeah, no, no, very much so. And yeah. there was so much competition as well. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I could really sort of excel at was my sport. And even yeah. then, there were people better than me. And uh, okay, yeah. um, that's what I say to students now. It's important that kids realise that they're ne- not necessarily they know what they're going to do at mm-hmm. 16, 17, 18. They're making yeah. some of the biggest decisions of their life, whether they go into a job or go to university. Yeah. And, I, and when I teach them, especially first years at university, yeah. I'll say to them, look at, you know, look at my example. You may change. You will change. I think I saw a stat that you have three major career changes in your life on average. Yeah. So mine came in my mid-twenties to change the whole thing. Mm-hmm. But the interesting thing about it, I always, I always felt I wanted to be sort of a teacher and yeah. I enjoyed, you know, I enjoyed kids. I liked sport. Yeah. So that's what I signed up to do, actually, okay. to become a physical education teacher. Okay. Um, but me being me, I looked at the circle around home and I didn't want to go more than an hour and a half away from home. I mean, that's, oh, like, of that's what a small town yes. boy I was. Yes. So I ended up at Cardiff and I would come home every weekend but then I got the opportunity to go to Stellenbosch University okay. for a semester. Wow. And uh, because she was down here then and yes. I came back down, matter of wow, this yeah. thing just changed my life. And, and are you still, you're still in touch with her? Unfortunately, unfortunately not. I bumped into her mum and okay. dad about a year or two ago and they said a lovely thing. They said, we're following your journey, Dean. And okay. I said, give her my regard. I think yeah. she ran off with a rich businessman. From <laughs> Italy, but that's another thing. But yeah. no, she, the lady yeah. changed my life. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, of, she, course, she, of she course. The distance thing did for us in terms yeah. of the romance, but yeah, um, yeah. she saw something in me and... Uh, yeah. And I'd forever be grateful. I thank yes. her in my book, and you know, oh, it's, man, it's a wonderful sure. that, 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 yeah. that is, no, that's, that's great. Now, and it's, South Africans are. Uh, we we are, I have a different view, uh, viewpoint from from you, so it's actually interesting to note. Um, we, we always think, oh, the English people think South Africans are very hard workers, but do they really? <laughs> Well, there is a reputation for that, of course. Yes, I know. Yes, I mean, when, when, when we didn't have to get visas, of course, I mean, yes. you would go over there and South Africans could be found everywhere. Well, let's face yes. it, they're found everywhere anyway yes. in the world. But uh, no, I certainly know with that, that group, the dentists, they were employed in the NHS and they used to call it the filling factory. Because yes. as, as my British friends will know, our dentistry isn't the best. We're not okay. known for our great teeth. And these poor South Africans would turn up and have to work for the NHS and they were horrified at the amount of fillings they would have to do. I always remember <laughs> oh, that. Um, 
and I know I certainly I love the dentists in this country. That's an advantage of being here. But um, no, they, they they were there because of the opportunity. It was yes. seen. It was seen as a you know even today you know to go to Britain. It's an opportunity. Yes. Yeah, yes. I've always seen my opportunity here in South Africa. Yes. I know. It's amazing. Like I found I found the place I need to be. You know. Well, I love to hear that, Dean. I love to hear that. I'm sure a lot of people do because a lot of us are stuck it out, and we and and uh, I, I'm I'm one that believes it. Just. Stay. I mean, I, I love this place. We we have a, a beautiful way of life, and 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 I want to stay here. Yeah. Absolutely, do you know? And a lot of people are immigrating, but but I'm glad to know that that you that you're coming out from there to here. That's it, it's a good sign. For me, it's all about the people. I yeah. I have I, I've, I struck a chord with the people. I love the lifestyle. It's outdoor lifestyle. It's sunshine. You don't have to you don't have to plan a week a month in advance if you go and visit somebody. It's all spontaneous. Life is a bit more freer here. Yeah. Yet we've got probably the worst uh, reputation or worst marketing department in yeah. world <laughs> in world uh, tourism, for example, because no. you know people don't really understand what it's like here. And no. I, as I often say, when I go back to the UK and do talks, I wouldn't be there if it was if it was awful. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've travelled. I I've, I've lived in Australia. I've I've, I've travelled around America. I've been all okay. around the world. This yeah. place has got something special. It's the, it's yeah. the best kept secret. But because of its reputation for the other stuff, you know, which we have got, we've got yeah. problems with crime and politics and those kind of things. Yeah, yeah. It really, it really um, takes away from what we have here. It's yeah. got soul. I yeah. think that's something I found. Africa has soul. Yeah. Yeah. The people that, especially here in Port Elizabeth, for example. Yeah. I mean, I go for a run along the front, and every single person greets you. They yes. smile. They say, we do that. We do yeah, that. No, and, and, the people, and we go over to England or to, to New York or wherever, and the people think you're bloody crazy. Mm. They think you want, they want to, they want to attack them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why is that guy greeting me? Hello, I'm from Port Elizabeth. Lovely, eh? <laughs> and, the, and the head goes down and they go... You're from New York. York. Do you know Jimmy? Jimmy, whatever. <laughs> no, it's lovely. It's a naivety, isn't it? And, yes. and do you know what? During the World Cup, in 2010 when people experience a lot of people yeah. experience this for the first time that was what they took away they've yes. never been to a place like it with that kind yeah. of energy yeah. and uh, I thought yeah the world's catching on now I hope not many people know about it because we don't want yeah. you want to <laughs> right. yeah, we will, we will let them through slowly yeah. <laughs> and so Stellenbosch um, yeah. came across the study amazing wow. amazing and, and what, did, what, did you, what, what was your, your majors in... well the thing was remember she was an Africana yes so yes. um, I learned as an Englishman or an Ingles man as they mm. call it here in Africa, to, to keep my mouth shut and to listen because yes. they're going to tell you a lot of the history you perhaps don't appreciate. Yes. We can go back to the serious stuff like the Anglo-Boer War and whatever and I didn't realise the role yeah. that the British played down here. Yeah. You know, the concentration camps and those yeah. kind of things, scorched earth. And yeah. I thought, hang on, I've got to respect this history a little bit yeah. more. So I started, I made it my, made it my focus to, to research the, not so much the dynamic between black and white people in the yeah. country, but the dynamic between the two white groups, which hadn't yeah. really been done. Yeah. Um, and then I realised there was this divide. Um, yeah. Even Van der Merwe's uh, Helga was yeah. her name. Her, her own grandmother yeah. was quite reluctant to meet me really? and, and because, one, because I was an Englishman. And then really? I thought, and then I, now I understand that. But I was never ever made to feel unwelcome. Yeah. But it was a case of I knew I had to um, basically respect the situation. Yeah. But the interesting thing was, for the first time in my life. As an Englishman, we are on an island now of 70 million people. They were ask, people were asking me my opinion on big issues, and I thought it's a real privilege now that I've got, yeah. and I've got to do, I've got to show them the respect to be informed. Yes. So I did a lot of reading, and at that stage, I'd started at Cardiff to do a phys ed degree, but I was not so much in the into the activities or yeah. more into the studying. And I under, I, I was enjoying looking at the history of sport. Mm -hmm. So here in South Africa, of course, they play mm -hmm. cricket, rugby, soccer, netball, hockey, all the British sports. And yes. I wanted to know how and why that came down here. And I was at Stellenbosch, of course, Gino, and there is mm -hmm. a big rugby yes. university. Definitely. And you've got these big Afrikaans yeah. games guys playing the most English of sports. Yes. And I thought, hang on, if you're anti-English, why are you playing this sport? <laughs> and it was a case of beating them at their own game. Yeah. I realised that the history of these sports all had different way, ways in which it could almost be a lens through which to look at the history of the country. Yeah. So when people say to me, oh, you're the sports guy, I'll say, no, I'm a history guy that I yeah. use sport as a lens through which to look at things. Because sport, as you know, yes. especially here in South Africa and in the UK, yeah. is one of the most important cultural things we have. Um, so can so I, be so political as well as history. History and and sport can be so uh, such a, a political tool. Yeah, yeah. yeah.
Sweet. I mean, this is the, this was my drink in Stellenbosch, Vintook. Yeah. Well, I didn't get the plug. Um, but uh, <laughs> as the Vintooks flowed, flowed mm. of course, the, the, the truth started to come out, and perhaps things, you know, and I, serum. I, yeah, exactly. And I, I listened to the attitudes and things like that, and I thought, do you know what? My this could be my this could be my role to actually write a bit of history here because yeah. there were so many gaps because. I I read about things like tour, the the cricket tours to Australia and the West Indies and places, but nobody had really gone into the depth of writing it here. So I decided to sign up for a master's degree at Stellenbosch, okay. which then turned into a PhD, and we'll okay. talk about it as we go on because that led yes. to the book. Uh, so I was yeah. now probably living my best life. I'm th I'm in my late twenties, turning thirty. <laughs> I'm a student in Stellenbosch. Prime of your life, young and I'm age. telling you, uh, people at home would say to me, Dean, you're very you're very brave to go to Africa and study. And I remember it was a Tuesday in February, and my friends in England will appreciate this. February in England is not the prettiest it's place. Cold. And I'm I'm lying at, by this Olympic sized pool, watching all these beautiful blonde ladies walk past <laughs> me, and I'm thinking, Africa, I love it. Yeah. Uh, but no, joking aside, uh, for me, I was shown a welcome and uh, basically this is where I had to do my work. It just felt like the place. And ever since, I, I've tried to go back and I've yes. tried to do other things, but it's pulled me back. Wow. And I, now... So I'm really you're home. home? It's home. It's home. Wow. It's our spiritual okay. home. I mean, COVID, yeah. we'll talk about COVID, I'm sure. Yeah, we yeah. had a, an amazing experience. It was almost an epiphany that this was where we needed to be. Now, as I said, we, uh, my, my wife and my baby now, we've yes. just had a baby and uh, this is home for us all. My, yeah. wife, my wife is Slovakian and she also yes. believes in South Africa, okay. which is quite incredible. So now, how did you meet your wife is Slovakian? Good Lord, man. I told you this was a story. <laughs> I hope everybody's uh, charged their glasses. Yes, get some drinks together. I don't know if they, maybe we should have a quick look while we've got a bit of a break at some of the comments. We've got a whole bunch of comments coming through here. I see Tuning from Nairobi, Kenya. I see Lavender. Lovely name, that. I thought yeah, it was. Lavender is the, uh, the Portuguese um, uh, national plant, by the way. I, I saw there was a Portuguese. Monroe Hull saying coffee and brandy in the old day. Cape Town, excellent. Norman Fisser. Hi, from Blue Water Bay. I know. Just around the bay. There we go. Uh, greeting from Brighton. Oh, hey, fantastic. Cap, oh, Cap James. Kat's our, one of our regulars as well. She's, okay. she's on the History Channel there on, on Facebook. Super. So I don't know if you guys are watching on Facebook or YouTube. Or, uh, there, there's Keith Clark's on YouTube. Thanks, Keith. We've got some of Keith Punters. Punters, right, yeah. Thanks, Keith, for Thanks, that. Keith. Thank you. I've been sn snogging on that for the last <laughs> a little bit. From a cold Cape Town, that's good. Maybe they're sending us some rain. Yeah, they might, yeah, might do. Let's hope so. Alta Fanamava is an absolute legend. Alta has got a heart, this huge heart. Uh, amazing lady, Nash, uh, yeah. also involved with the, with the rugby players, she knows them okay. all as well. Okay. Uh, Darren Nash, uh, I don't know, Darren Vilish. Uh, I've, I've got to mention Vili Schlechter. Yes. Vili Schlechter was at our wedding, we didn't know him before, he was a plus one. That man kept the party going all night, he never <laughs> left the dance floor. <laughs> oh, if, no, if you need a party, <laughs> invite Vili, he's the man who'll keep it going. Moi, moi. Oh, great. Uh, uh, Veronica Tinley, so go from Summerwood Tennis Club. Yes, oh, yeah, really? you know, fantastic nice tennis club. Nice Summerwood, you know. Yes, it's that, lovely. Lovely to have the tennis club people, yeah. And Cheryl Lottering as well. Monroe, how, how's it, Doc? It's great to see you again. Oh, great. Nice to see you guys. Beer grills. <laughs> beer grills. I don't know if that's beer grills. It must be the opposite. Uh, Mary Jones shivering in Cape Town. Wow, that's interesting. So they've got some cold weather there. Yeah, yeah. Lynn Dumpier, thank you. Good evening, Dean. Are you ready? Indeed, he is. I am ready, Lynn. Uh, thank you. Ex Cape Townian, now also in PE. Good to hear that too. Leon Naidu from Durbanville. He's my football buddy. Ah, uh, Leon. Me, Leon, he's a fit guy. He's uh, really? we play in the over 50s, me and Leon. Oh, and really? He runs more than me, and that's ah. I tell you what, he's a fit guy. Lizole. Oh, Lizole. Jean. <laughs> Lizole. He's, he's the guy yes. we're going to talk about now with the, with the project we've got coming up. Oh, so magic thank you so much for your support, everybody. It's oh, fantastic. fantastic. Oh, nice so Windy Cape Town, let's see, we go. Uh, Daiga. Daiga Surakuda. From Latvia. That is my fantastic. Oh, that Hello Latvia. hello Latvia. I don't know. I wish I knew what language <laughs> or how to say hello. Latvian. No, I, I will, we'll have to look that one up. Yes, we'll have to look. Well, they, maybe they can tell us. They can tell us. Jeffrey Applewhite. Hello, Jeffrey, right up the road. Tourism Hospitality Institute. I'm extremely excited to know Dean is settling in GQ. Absolutely. Thank you, Jeffrey. Jeff, and I know Jeff will enjoy one of your talks at his place. He's got a place up the road, yeah, in Church Road. 
uh, Marie Voges saying love these Facebook posts. Yes, uh, and, and your newsletter as well, which we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. get into as well. Yeah, busy with all that. Yes, yes. That, it's, it's amazing. That, that, that newsletter has sort of become, uh, become something as well. Yeah, no, I've got to give a nod. We mentioned my wife, Danica. I mean, she's, yes. she's, she's amazing. I mean, she also studied history. I mean, she, she likes history and football, so I knew she was the one for me. We, yes. were, we were made for each other. Um, she actually uh, does a lot of work. Every every Monday we send out a newsletter, This Day in History, What Happened This Week? Yes. And it goes to about 2,000 people. I'm sure Gary's going to share the link now in terms of how to sign up. It's completely free, which is fantastic. It's great. Um, and that's how I got to come to PE because Mr. Adrian Gardner was a big follower of the newsletter. And ah. one day he phoned me up and out of the blue, and as you, if you know Adrian, this is how he approached me. He said, is that Dean Allen? I said, yes. He said... He said, I love your stuff, I get your newsletter, letter, but I've got a problem with you. And I said, oh, um, who is this? And he said, it's Adrian from uh, Port Elizabeth. He said, you write too much about the Western Cape. I want you to come to the Eastern Cape and tell our story. Wow. So isn't that amazing? So he gets the newsletter and, and through that, he, he got to know about our work. And it's all completely free. We do yes. it, we do it, you know, almost just as we were kind of in between jobs. Yeah. And uh, from that, we've got a book, This Day in History, yes, which is history history history, yeah. Yeah. We'll which, to, I suppose we'll have to find out as well. Which Danny's, Danny's uh, name is on there, of course, because she's very much part of that. A and, man and um, wife project. And it, it looks, it, it, I, love, I love the cover because I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a steampunk junkie. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's kind of okay. steampunk. It is. It is. a little watch and everything. Yeah, no, it's cool. But I, I, I've, I've loved it as well. And, and, and you guys are, I mean, you do it, it, you write it all it's like you said. You said yourself and your wife write that that thing, and it, and it's amazing. I, I love the the fact that you that you've taken this history, put it in your own words, and 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 it, it gives that um, that angle yeah. from from your angle. You know. No, for me, um, I was working at university for years. For me, history is about learning from it. You know, um, Rudyard Kipling said, "If we don't if we don't learn from it, you know." we don't learn from our history, what would we do? Yeah. I mean, the best history is remembered through story. So I'm a storyteller. Yes, yes, yes. um, and it, for me, it, it has to be accessible. So these little snippets of, of information. Yeah. The interesting one, Gino, I heard that down in Cape Town, they've got a big pub quiz at oh, one yeah. of the, the, at the, uh, uh, um, the Fireman's Arms. You've probably heard of that pub. Yeah. And, and literally, this thing's been going for years. They found out that people were getting my newsletters Yes. And because the qu the quiz master was using my newsletter, as, as a and they and they rumbled this team that were winning two or three weeks because they worked out it was from my newsletter. So yeah. the whole thing's got a life of its own. So yeah, it's even, nice. for, even for a bunch of che cheating, I know, quiz even cheats. for cheats. So just be careful it. with that. So if you want, if, you know, you always got that mate who knows who, yes. who knows more than anyone, and it's lovely. You've got that. So you asked me earlier what happened this week in history. Um, Prince William was born, of course, oh, nice. uh, and now we've got Wimbledon well, coming. Just, you're not even referring to the book when you know. No, 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 no. no, no, no it's, all, it's all up there. It's all up. There. Um, this this week we've got Wimbledon starting, yeah. and and um, uh, we experienced 2011. We had the, the longest ever match between John Isner and, and Nicholas. Yes, Marie. was that on this day? No, uh, yeah, uh, no, I think week. tomorrow. I think tomorrow. You, you look at the news section and go through. Well, the people from Kenton will remember, or maybe from Summerwood Tennis Club will remember sure that. Well, well, what, what an incredible game, you know, that went on, and that's why they've had to change the his, you know, the length yeah. of the tennis, because it went on for ages. It was insane. Um, we were watching till like one o'clock in the morning yeah, or something no, ridiculous. No. <laughs> so, no, we really enjoyed, we really enjoyed doing that. It's hard work, but uh, it's, it's, it's keeping us in touch with people. And as I said, perhaps that even brought us here. So that's another fortuitous... Um, that's also to, 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 to PE and, yeah. and Adrian Gardner doing amazing things he's been on the show as well and, yeah. and, and an amazing story that he's had uh, there we go big hello from Adrian Gardner the team from Mantis Founders Lodge yeah, and it. I've Thank been out there at Founders Lodge it is fantastic it is uh, <laughs> wonderful uh, there was a um, we, we, we did a function I think, I'm sure there was the same place uh, out there we, we just look over this beautiful bay oh, and, uh, and it's, it's lovely I love the way that they've designed the place um, and uh, I mean, he's, he's always doing something. He's always got a project on the go. I know. Adrian, uh, Adrian's one of those inspirational characters. I mean, yes. I hope he doesn't mind me saying he's in his late seventies now. And yes. I mean, he's got an energy. I mean, he puts myself and Gary to shame. I mean, yeah. hey, Gary's a hard worker. Yes. Um, and he's always on the phone to people. He's, he's he's got ideas. He's an ideas man. And I, I'm really privileged that he saw something in me. So he, he picked up the phone. And when we came along, we ended up at Founders Lodge. Yeah. I had my baby with me. I had my mum visiting from England. We ended up at this beautiful spot. And I remember um, walking out onto the lawn, and there we have four white rhinos in front of us. And I was just blown away. And, uh, and they said, Adrian's waiting for you. I said, well, I'm sorry, Mr. Gardner's going to have to wait. There's a rhino in front of me. And I remember taking the baby and showing, and I just thought, wow. 
Yeah. What an opportunity this is. Yeah. And I asked my mum, I said, what do you think, mum? She said, I'm not really sure what's going on, but isn't this marvellous? <laughs> And, it, and, and that's what the Eastern Cape does. It provides opportunity for people with the right spirit. And I'm a big believer in you connect with people at the right time. Sometimes it takes yeah. a while, yeah. you know, yeah. but this has happened. I mean, I promise you, uh, I'm sure people who follow me on social media and have seen the recent success, it's been hard for a long time. Yeah. And you, yeah. you have to almost, like fishing, I always yeah. say, you leave, the, you leave the, the line in the water and every now and again, somebody of significance will yeah. bite. And that was Adrian Gardner, and I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm privileged to write his story, but I'm sure we'll talk more about that. Fantastic, yes. Yeah, yeah. So you're going, to, you're going to be writing it over the next, this is your, your project now for the yeah. next little while. Maybe we should, we should uh, do, talk about that now, um, mm. because it's, uh, and, and it's got a conservation angle uh, as well. It takes yeah. a little bit about it. Yeah. Well, anyone who knows Adrian, he, he was uh, fundamental in bringing wildlife tourism to this part of the country. We, when we think of South Africa, you think of the Kruger Park and the areas mm. to the north. We had the Addo Ele Elephant Park. Yes. But Adrian is a pioneer really in private wildlife yeah. tourism. Yeah. Um, and it's amazing how it came about. He saw that farm um, where the Shamwari, uh, uh, yes. you know, story grew, yeah. and and basically the thing grew and grew. And he saw an opportunity to bring paying guests. As the new South Africa opened up yes. in the nineties, guests were coming, and they wanted to do something unique. And as Adrian often says, what have we got in Africa that is unique? Nowhere else has got. It is our wildlife, of course. And it's the big, big five, the yeah. big five, which is a term he uses all the time. Yeah. We've got wonderful hotels. We've got the best beaches, by the way, in the world. Yes. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> but other countries also have. But we have got the wildlife. So Adrian saw that opportunity. So my remit is to look at how the Eastern Cape became a wildlife tourism destination. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, Adrian is central to that story, but there are so many other players as well. Yeah. I mean, you've got the, the, the Folds family at Amakala, you've yeah. got the Rushmeers at Karika. Yes. You've got these, these incredible kind of um, game reserves. And I'm sorry, yeah. I, 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 I'm going to mention everybody if I can. <laughs> yes. um, but we also have a, give a nod to the other things that were going on as well. Remember, hunting was a big thing in the Eastern Cape. Yeah. So that's yeah. perhaps controversial. Yeah. But it's something I've got to engage with because these guys were also conservationists in many yeah. respects because they brought animals into the area. Of course. And, and, and there's, a, there's a whole uh, discussion about ethical hunting yeah. that, that that's, could, could eventually happen, you know. And, um, because, uh, you know, it, truth be told, it's like it's, if, if there's no demand for something, does it survive? You know, it's always the case. A farmer said to me recently, yeah. Dean, he said it comes down to this. If you put a value on something, yeah. farmers will produce it. Yeah. If you don't have a value, it will go. Yeah. And, of course, we know now the value of animals and the fact they're being yes. reared. It's not my thing. It's yeah. not my thing. I'd yeah. rather take a photograph yes. of an animal than shoot it. But it's also yeah. part of African culture that I have yeah. to respect. So that's what I'm doing. Um, and Adrian's quite surprised because I'm, as a historian, I'm really yeah. digging. I'm going oh, back really? to the start. I'm, I'm meeting people now that have inspired him, but also has been part of the bigger story. Uh, his great mentor was a guy called Dr. Ian Player, Gary yeah. Player's brother. Uh, yes. And okay. he was a great conservationist. And it was, it was Ian Player that inspired Adrian to, to leave a legacy. And that's what he's yeah. leaving, of course, yeah. a legacy. Yeah. But I also want to also acknowledge other people that were part of this story. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I, think, I think there's two books. I think we've got Adrian Gardner's Wonderful Colourful Life, yes, which yes. needs to be told, <laughs> yes. but also this conservation and, and the wildlife um, destination. How, yeah. how has this been transformed? We're looking. You can drive along the coast, and it's quite incredible. You have fields that were full of sheep and cattle and, and maize probably 20 yeah. years ago, and now, now have buck, lion, rhino. Back to the roots again. It's almost this idea of, they call it rewilding. Yes, yes. Um, so man affects it in both ways. We're almost playing God. Mm. But it has to be done in a very careful way. No, it's exciting. I mean, it, look yeah, at this. Yeah. So it takes me away from Mikey's Fontaine and sport, and yes. now I feel I'm really really doing something of significance. And as yeah. I said, I thank you for the, the to the Gardner family for giving me this invitation. Yeah, some of the guys, like, just a quick, quick, quick look, some more comments over here while, we, while we're there. I see, uh, oh man, I, I don't even know where to start. There we go from, uh, from Sanju. Sanju, hi, doctor. It's always a doctor, eh? Yeah, you, need to, you need to get that, uh, that uh, stethoscope. As I explained to you, I'm not that kind of doctor. Yeah. So you don't, you don't <laughs> have a heart attack when I'm around. That's right. Monroe Hull says, would, uh, would you ever look back to full-time lecturing? Good question, good question, Momo. Um, I miss teaching, but I also dabble with it as well. I go yeah. in and give a lot of classes at schools. Yes. I've done some online work. And you do talks as I well, which talks. is it's it's kind of like, What we're doing now is lecturing. It's, 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 it's lecturing. I mean, yeah. lecturing, as Momo hopefully would, would agree, yeah. you have to be an entertainer. You have to bring yeah. your energy into a room as well. Yes. Um, but no, I, I, I'm not missing academia. I, I, yeah. I enjoy the fact that it's given me a great grounding and to do stuff yeah. like this. But I know I see myself as a, a man who would write your story now, you know, I'm yeah. kind of, I, 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 
I, I thought of it the other day. I'm a hired, not a hired gun, but I'm a hired pen. Hired pen. <laughs> you, you know, have pen, will travel. Yes, yeah, so I'll see where that leads me. Grizel Hart also loves her history as well, and, and she was on the, on the um, yeah. uh, Heritage uh, Society as well. I think she does that. Uh, encourage, what encouraged your interest in the history of Port Elizabeth? Do you know what? I like to I like to almost write about the underdog or the forgotten places. I mean, yeah. not the Port I'm sorry, Grizel, yeah. I don't mean Port Elizabeth or Quebec is forgotten, but it's certainly not in the limelight like yeah. Cape Town or Johannesburg or even Durban. And every time I come here, there's a real salt to the place. Mm. And again, it's a bit like me when I arrived in the mid-90s. I feel like I can make a difference here. And I'm also very conscious. I don't want to be coming in with this blaze of glory that I'm yeah. going to tell the story. I see myself as a messenger, almost as um, someone who's going to spread good. And yeah. the reception I've got from the historical societies and people yeah. like Grizel and the welcome, they're going to help me tell this story. I love Grizel. She used yeah. to run, it was number 10, uh, uh, Grizel, I uh, was going to say 10 Downing Street, but it was number, number 7 Castle Hill. Is it 7 Castle Hill? Yeah. I think it was. And um, or, or, or it was, I think it was Seven Castle Hill, wasn't the because uh, it was um, the McLennans that used to that, that were the other the oldest house as well. Okay. But I think she had the Castle Hill. I don't know. You correct me if I'm wrong, Griselle. I can't remember now. But she was definitely involved in the museums, and uh, and uh, a lovely lady. But uh, just just something that crossed my mind while you were talking about it is that coming in to do the history. Of, of, a, of a place that um, uh, sort of a, not a foreign place to you but, but certainly um, not your home yeah. would give you an advantage mm-hmm. in that uh, well a, a disadvantage I suppose that you, you, that you haven't had years and years here that you would have heard maybe stories and stuff about stuff but, but and, and, and collected information like that but certainly would give you a, a angle that's not without an agenda so you, you wouldn't you wouldn't be tied into any cultural group, any cultural thing, or any any specific place born in a certain place. So you only know about that. You would be able to look at it in a, a step back and look at it in a bigger way. Yeah, that's a great point, Gino. It's fundamental, actually, probably to my success. Yeah. Um, like the accent sounds like I've just got off of a plane, <laughs> and uh, so a lot of people think, well, I'm going to tell this guy. He needs to know. So that I, they tend to open up to me. Wow. Um, and remember, I, I've served my apprenticeship since the mid-90s. I've been here that long. Um, I'm a permanent resident now in South yeah. Africa. Okay. I feel South African. A lot of people know, and I'm sorry, my English friends, I supported the Springboks against England in 2019. I mean, you! Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Talk about, talk about hang him at the tower. Um, <laughs> it was, it was, it, I realised that this was, this was my place. So what you're saying is, is, is completely right. I remember in 2010, I was doing some work with the, uh, the universities in Cape Town. We were commissioned by the city of Cape Town to look at the legacy of the 2010 FIFA World Cup. You remember the days of Sepp Blatter and all the money that yes. was coming oh, around? Oh, Lord, yes. And, then there when there is. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was lots of controversy, wasn't there? And um, yes, Qatar. Don't even what? go there, Russia. Yeah, no, don't even what? go there. I don't know where it's going to be. Good Lord. The, 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 so they, the, I was the guy that they sent to interview Danny Jordan and some of the big players because, wow. and and I, I remember the guys would come in and out sort of five minute interviews and he'd give me almost an hour because I was yeah. a, he almost, he thought I probably was a little bit naive so I'd act that uh, naive but I'd get that information. <laughs> but no, <laughs> sneaky hobbits. Sneaky, sneaky. <laughs> but, but also I think people, and I hope you do forgive me for my pronunciation and things like that, but it also, I think it does give me a, a slight angle in which people will go, okay, this guy's coming in, let's hear yeah. what he's got to say. He's not on my side, he's not on their side, there's, yeah, yeah. there's no cultural thing there, no. it's, it's all it's all like, okay, this guy's coming new and fresh yeah. and, and we can tell him the real truth from our side. Yeah. And we're going we're gonna to be doing some fundamental work in the, week, in the weeks to come, we'll be talking yeah. about it now. I mean, there's a lot of controversy at the moment about renaming South Africa, the whole thing oh, about wow. place names. Yeah. And, and you know, that's really controversial. We're Very living in Port Elizabeth, or is it Quebec? It's Quebec yeah. now. It was Port Elizabeth. A lot of people don't even refer to the other name. So I've seen this opportunity of working with people and actually bringing that together. And it's an exciting project. We're going to be launching very soon called Renaming South Yes, Africa. tell me about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. I was approached by um, some, some guys up from Johannesburg, but they're Eastern Cape, Causa people. Okay. And they said to me, Dean, you're the guy that I think that could actually have this narrative. Yeah. So I'm going to be working with a guy called Lally Boy. And Lally is an yeah. incredible performer. He's, a, he's a, a poet. He's a rapper. He looks a bit like Snoop Dogg. I hope you don't mind me mentioning that rapper. But he's, but he's, da- he's down with the kids so he's okay. trendy he's got that thing yeah. but he's, he's a great part and what we're going to do is almost tell the history of place from two different perspectives yeah and then have the conversation that yeah. we all need to have 
Yes. Um, not an argument, but a positive conversation. Understand your point of view yeah. and perhaps my point of view, and then we agree, I hope we'll agree, that we're, we're all South African. Yeah. Because this idea of renaming a place doesn't change the fundamentals, which is the service provision, you know, the way people are still living in poverty. Yeah. Yet we, we become very obsessed with this idea of statues and names and things yes. like that. Yes. So yes, I'm do. hoping, I'm hoping, and we're going to launch it over the next uh, few days, so please keep an eye on, on the socials for yeah. that that this is going to have a real impact. I've already spoken to the guys at Collegiate here in town, and okay. they can't wait. That's a school, by the way, yeah, Paul yeah, Elizabeth. Yeah. They can't wait to have us in there. And like they said, the girls will love Lally Boy because he's a good-looking guy, he's charismatic. <laughs> You've got to have that showbiz kind of thing. But um, the message is important. So yeah. going back to your original question, I think that's easier for probably an Englishman who's invested in South Africa than perhaps an Afrikaner who yeah. now yes. perhaps will have a different kind of even a perception of things. Yeah, yeah, because uh, it, it, it's almost like you're open for negotiation, doesn't matter when, what, what, when it is in, yeah, the, in, yeah. the, in, at, at the, in the timeline as well. Yeah. I, I love that. But, and, and, and like I said, politics and uh, history and sport um, yeah. as well, also so tied in. I always think of, of, of the Romans, um, Parnum et Circum, wasn't it? It's just, they say uh, uh, bread and circuses. That's what they did. They built the they built the uh, arenas. No they different. built the uh, coliseums because if the people were watching sport, they were happy. The gladiators it, bring them out. It's what they call an opiate to the masses. Yes. You still see it today. Yes. Um, I often say, and my British friends will realise this: the two things they didn't ban in England during COVID was yes. alcohol and and football specifically. <laughs> so it meant we lived for our Saturdays and yes. we could we could kind of forget the woes of the world. Yes. And that's been going on since sport was invented. You go back to yeah. the Greeks and the Romans, right. and it's all about. You know, you look at the, the, the I do I do a talk called you know the history of sport and how it actually shapes society and vice yes, versa. Yes. And you can just bring it forward and you look at a lens through sport and you realise what society's like. It was either violent, it was fair, it was equal. Yes. Now of course we look at we look at something like Wimbledon where we've got equal pay, for example, yeah, for yeah. men and women. The Olympics, you've got the same number of events for men and women. Wow, yeah. Back in uh, back in eighteen ninety six, when the modern Olympic Games were actually introduced, yeah. do you know there were no women involved? Really? Because it was the Victorian days, and women women their places yes, in, the, in the kitchen. Long dresses. And it's, and it's yes. incredible. Over a hundred years, we've evolved wow. as a society, and that is reflected in sport as well. So anybody that says to me, well, sport doesn't matter, it actually does, because yeah. it's, the, it's actually how you can judge society. Yes, and, and, and uh, just as you were talking about rugby, these, these big burkis in, in Stellenbosch and in South Africa playing rugby, but it's, a, it's an English sport, is that not a success of the British Empire? Totally, <laughs> you know? totally. I mean, did they, did, is, is, was that, I, mean, I, I presume you, you bring it up in the book, yeah, is it, yeah. the book is uh, Empire, War Empire War and Cricket, I mean, it's... it's, it's Tied in. It's all tied in. tied in together. I mean, the thing about Mikey Fontaine, I mean, that, yeah. that was my, that's my number one hit. Yes, it sold 15,000 copies. The book has really Incredible. put me on the map. Um, I've, I've told that story hundreds and hundreds of times. I sell it as a Downton Abbey of South yeah. Africa. Okay. It's fantastic. But the kind of characters, Cecil Rhodes, you know, yes. Queen Victoria, uh, Lord Kitchener, wow. these kind of people, Rudyard Kipling, they're all featured here yeah. in South Africa. Because of gold and diamonds, this is where the British Empire was focused on for a time. Wow. And what did they do? Yes, they fought a war here, but they sent their sports teams down. Because if you played together, you did business together. And eventually, you were part of the empire. It was the old man's club, the yes. gentleman's club. Of and um, I could see, and Mikey's Fontaine, by the way, for anybody who doesn't know Mikey's Fontaine, it's a quirky little place in the middle of nowhere, but it's yes. very famous here in South Africa. Um, nobody had written its story. So after I'd finished my uh, master's degree at Stellenbosch, I realised there was this idea of cricket starting somewhere. Okay. Now, we know that the first ever test match was here at St George's Park. Okay. The by the way, PE, the first cricket match. So it is okay, There we go. Well, you know, all um, the settlers were here, I suppose. Yeah, of, course they, easier. of course they were. Yeah. But Mikey's Fontaine was so important because there was a Scot Lucille like this. There was a Scotsman that set up. Oh, a Scotsman. They're all Lucy. influential. <laughs> They're always influential. But this guy was 24 years of age. He arrived four years before. He was working class and he made his money through gold and diamonds. Okay. So he used cricket and sport and the building of this model Victorian town as a smokescreen for his activities. Oh. And he also bought his... What is he doing? Laundry money or something? Well, it's insider trading and illegal oh. diamond buying. And that's, oh. that's how Cecil Rhodes, come on. Do you oh, know no, that's how Cecil Rhodes got rich? Well, um, I knew Cecil Rhodes wasn't particularly nice. 
<laughs> really, they were industrious. Yes, yes, like yes, that. Yes. But the point is that sport was brought down as part of this almost political move yes. to control South Africa. Okay. And the Brits did that. Look at India, where they play cricket today. Yes. You know? I mean, look at the power. Australia, they play the British sports. So yes. wherever the British were, they took their, their games with them. But here in South Africa, it's my opportunity because nobody had really written. About the cricket. Uh, and, the, like about sport and the beauty things. of that book, I managed to get hold of the family archives. So, there's, wow. I mean, this was a this was a people's story. I could write this man's story. I saw the letters from but his, his wife. name was was James Logan. James Logan. James Logan. Logan. Okay. Yeah, um, James Logan. And Cecil Rhodes is on record as saying he'd only ever met two creators in his lifetime himself. Oh, of course. Yeah. And uh, and James Douglas Logan of Mikey's wow. Fontaine. Okay. So he clearly admired the man. Yes. So he it was amazing. It was like a gift from God that I could write this story, and it put me on the map here. And and every time somebody says to me, well, you're English, you don't really know, I say, I went to Stellenbosch and I wrote the book of Mikey's Fontaine. Yeah. And then straight away they go, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> so, you know, it gives me that credibility in terms of acceptance. Anyway. Any interesting stories you could give us from there? Just a bit of a teaser for the book? Or a... Well, a great story is um, I'm all about history uh, teaching us what's happening today. So we can look for examples from the past. If we don't learn from our history, it will repeat itself. Look what's happening in you, you know, in Europe at the moment with yes. Russia and Ukraine. Oh. I mean, that's someone trying to expand an empire. We won't go yeah. there, but we can yeah. see from history this is not going to end well yeah. if, if that continues. Yeah. So my thing is looking from examples from what happened um, at Mikey's Fontaine to actually uh, to actually go go into into how we can relate to today in South Africa. So James Logan, a wonderful story. He was a railway man, and he made his money from um, basically having the restaurants along the rail along the railway oh, network. Wow. Okay. Because there was no such thing as a dining car in those days, you see. Oh, you just, stop off. You'd have to stop twenty minutes, eat your dinner, pay the price, and get back on. Now, what do they say about Scotsmen? Do you know? You know what this? Well, is? I haven't got you know the deep pockets. Deep pockets. Yes, deep right. pockets. So they say James Logan served this soup so hot that they couldn't finish it in time, and it went back in the pot, which is brilliant. <laughs> but he, uh, that, oh, look at that, Lucy. That, yeah. Sorry about that. But that, that, was, that was one of the folklore, but he actually made his money because he knew someone in the government and his name was James Sivright and he was Cecil Rhodes' man who gave away the government contract. Tenders. Tenders. Uh, he didn't go out to tenders. tender. Look at that. These two Scotsmen yeah. basically were pals and he got 18 year deal of all the railway um, refreshment facilities. Mm. So in 1893, the James Logan contract controversy brought down Cecil Rhodes' government wow. because a man called J.X. Merriman said enough's enough. Yeah. These men have their fingers in the pot. Okay. So if you think about that, it's nepotism. Of course. We've just gone through it now with Jacob Zuma and the yeah, doctors. Yeah, yeah. Of course, of These course. guys knew from, learned from the best, which is from the colonial. Tender, tender years. It started early. Yeah. But of course, my, my, my relationship with Mikey Fontaine goes yeah. beyond goes beyond the story. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Gary, have you got the video? Yes, you've got the video. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's have a quick squeeze of the video. Let's see what he's got. Right. As do you. <laughs> and more back slapping. Now, then, you may remember we told you recently about a man called Dean Allen who's established links with the township in South Africa. Their football team was, un was enthusiastic but couldn't play in their local league because they had no equipment. Mm. Well, Dean is a keen Bristol City fan and <laughs> their kit man Roger Barton sorted him out with shirts, socks and shorts. That's right, and then he took them to Mikey's yeah, Fontaine, which is near Cape Town, <laughs> and he's just returned with this film of his trip. They look very much the part, just like any other team lining up for the cameras, but this is the first time these players have ever had their own complete kit. They come from here, Mikey's Fontaine, and this is what the tourists see when they come to this beautiful outpost of empire. A highlight stop for the blue train taking the rich across the country. but they see only one half of the picture. This is the real Mikey's Fontaine, the other side of the tracks. A growing community of over 300 people, most living near the poverty line. Their passion football, their facilities basic. Every evening they turn out to play, practice or watch. I was delighted to present the children of the primary school with their kit. Oh, that's very beautiful, man. i never seen a shirt in South Africa, a shirt like that, as white as that. So I think the kids really appreciate what a Bristol City has done for them. They've never been played uh, in any of these shirts before. They haven't got a regular uh, soccer set. I think that is very good for Bristol City to sponsor us with that, with that uh, jerseys. I think the kids the kid is very proud of it. 
the senior team seem pretty pleased too. Um, our people of the soccer players are very happy with the, with the new T-shirts and playing in the new kit. With opposition like this around, you need all the help you can get. The Hawker not confined to rugby. Mikey's Fontaine prefer to gather for the Lord's Prayer. They played three matches while I was there. They won the lot. First goal, Mikey's Fontaine, one nil. Thanks to Bristol City, they can now play in the local league for the first time. Maybe one day, one of the Mikey's Fontaine players will pull on a Bristol City shirt at Ashton Gate. Dean Allen for PBC Points West in Mikey's Fontaine, South Africa. Yeah, uh, uh, that was your team, the Bristol. Uh, that was that was that was quite fortuitous. I knew yeah. the goalkeeper played at the time, and um, wow. you know the, the lads there. You know they never lost for three years wearing those shirts, which is quite incredible. Which is different from the real team. We're lucky we go three weeks, <laughs> three games, should I say, without losing. Yeah. But um, no, no, it was amazing to be able to give something, and it reminded me of the power of sport today. You know, just by giving them the same colour jerseys, they could yeah. play in a league, and that brought the community to get together. It gave them a focus for the weekend yeah. when they wouldn't go off and do other stuff. And also, you know, that was the other side of the tracks. The, 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 the hotel at Mikey's Fontaine is what normally generates the interest in business. Okay. But for me, uh, the guy that really, uh, uh, really is behind Mikey's Fontaine's success was a man named David Rawdon. And David Warden built, uh, bought Mikey's Fontaine in 1968 and brought it back to its former glory. Uh, he was famous for the Marine Hotel, Lanzarote, and Stella oh, wow. Amazing man. And he said to me, Dean, you write a book about this place and the breakfast on me. And that's why it took me 10 years to write it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but my relationship with the place grew. And uh, that's where we got married. Um, we got married on the 26th of February, uh, which was lovely. And... Uh, and um, yeah, I managed to persuade Danny to come there, and uh, no, it was great. We had 35 of our closest friends, and it felt like the journey was completed for now, anyway. And yes. it was time now to move somewhere else, you know. Well, okay, okay. Yeah. And 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 yeah, because uh, and, and you say 15,000 copies. That's amazing. It's a bestseller in South Africa. And and I love that that idea of of uh, showing off the the and and, and the real the real story behind it as yeah, well. You yeah. try and get that that uh, real feel, you know? Yeah, without a doubt. No, it's an incredible story. And then there's a lot of folklore around the whole town and everything. But I say to people, the real story is even more amazing. Yeah. This guy is a this guy is a Donald Trump, a Boris Johnson, yeah. someone who knows how to play the media and yeah. be a personality and those kind okay. of things. Okay. And I think we can learn so much. Yeah. Um, but the beauty of that book is it came from a PhD. So it yeah. means that it was researched to a certain level. Yes. And it, and, uh, but I had to write it for an audience. And, yes. and, it, and it, no, entertainment. It's, and, entertainment. And as I say, <laughs> if you ever get the chance, please come and hear me speak. And, uh, and I tell that story and people love it because it, they can't believe it. And this yeah. is somewhere in South Africa. And I believe, Gina, they'll make a movie out of it one day because it's got everything. It's, got, it's a period drama waiting to happen. Well, maybe it, we'll, we'll speak to our, our Stuart, Stuart Forrest. We've had him on the show doing an animated do. version. Please do, please do. <laughs> and, and I mean that, that, just, that was just the first time. So obviously you you you've moved on, and I, and I, when you moved now to to PE, tell us about just just briefly now how that that came about. Yeah. You you had uh, Adrian also uh, helping you there as well, but the books as well, yeah. the yeah. Eastern Cape generally. No, what happened really? Uh, we actually flew back, flew down just before COVID. Yeah. We get we came back to South Africa, and we okay. this was where we were going to stay. And then, of course, our world changed. As everybody knows, yes. COVID started. But here in South Africa, we had one of the hardest lockdowns in the world. And Danny, thankfully, um, my wife now, she said, listen, we've got to get out of Cape Town. Let's get to the country. We didn't know it was going to last for six months, let alone yeah. six weeks, you know. Um, so so you, you're hard lockdown, you actually... We moved. moved. We, 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 were, we were footloose and fancy free. Yeah. Do you know where we ended up? Uh, we ended up on, uh, on the top of... Uh, the, the map of Africa, wilderness, this beautiful oh, yeah. garden route. We had the ocean, we had everything. We turned into kind of hippies for six months, oh, you know? Really? We had the most incredible experience and we realized that we didn't have to chase anything yeah. anymore. We were in the most beautiful part of probably the world or certainly South Africa. Yeah. And opportunities presented themselves. One of the opportunities we I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about is the uh, I got to interview the Springbok players, the rugby players. Oh yes. And during during COVID that those were the kind of things that presented themselves because I was one of the first few p first people who got hold of Zoom and were doing online presentations. Yes, 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 so yes. the Players Fund 
um, actually uh, said to me, Dean, would you would you help promote our charity? I remember the they were doing that. Yes. Yeah, the Players Fund. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, they're the they're the registered charity here in South Africa who support injured rugby players. Yes. And all the top level guys back this charity. So there I was in wilderness on my little iPhone. Um, interviewing some of the greatest names in, in South yes. African rugby history. You know, people like Scout Berger, Brian Habana, um, Jake White, of course, the management, Victor Matfield, you name it, we did it. So I understand how you put these kind of things together. So you talk about yeah. pressured moments. For me, every Thursday night was the thing. I think we've got, we've got a clip there, Gary. Yeah, we've got a clip of, uh, uh, a clip clip of, the, of some of the, uh, the, the rugby players. Uh, he's busy doing, uh, doing it now, so we can we can chat about it. But, but let's, let's talk about COVID while yeah. while we're yeah. here as well. And and, and so so was, that, that was obviously one of the projects in, that, that that you did. Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, your your income stream was was probably coming from from speak from speaking guys. Uh, well, of course, and we were now an illegal industry yes. because you couldn't actually. So it was me. Of course, you were. You, yes. you, we couldn't we couldn't generate an income because we didn't have an audience. Yeah. And uh, no, our, our income literally disappeared, and yeah. so we decided to. I decided to do something worthwhile, which was actually to look at the comparison again, being a historian, thinking history should teach us about where we are now in the future. Yeah. We looked at something called the Spanish flu, which happened, I'm sure you yes, know, in 1920s. 1918 to oh, 1920 was at its heart. And we'd gone through this before as a human race. And not only that, probably up to 100 million people died as a result of the Spanish flu. It's still, as we speak, the world's worst natural disaster. So it's hard to explain to children who are having to wear masks, who yeah. can't go to school, but some of the comfort is we've gone through this before yes. and we'll go through it again and we will get we'll, through this. Yeah, okay. So two wrongs yeah. don't make a right, there's yeah. the saying. But in this case, a lot of our governments, our scientists took information from the Spanish flu, that incident that took there, yeah. and actually learned of how to deal with it now. And we're looking at the different waves and stuff that we're experiencing yes. now. But an interesting yeah. story, uh, one of my favourite stories, does anybody know why it was called the Spanish flu? No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Um, well, did, the Spaniards had started it all, in it? <laughs> well, that's, that's what the Americans wanted to blame, because yes. it started in an American army camp in Kansas. And it was the soldiers who moved to Europe for the First World War spread yes. this thing. Now, of course, it's tourists and people travelling yes. for business. Then it was World War One that spread this thing around the globe. The Spanish, bless them, who were neutral in the First World War, basically were reporting about this so-called flu quite openly, that one of the first people to get it was Alfonso the Thirteenth, their king. Oh. So they talked about this flu. Now, straight away, the British and the Americans could see the opportunity. They pointed at the Spanish and said, oh. it's the Spanish flu. Oh, man. And do you know what the Spanish call it? They call it the French flu because they didn't want to label it. <laughs> it's so the French, it's the French flu. It's the, it's the, it's the French as well. <laughs> do you know it's no, it is not us, it is uh, you can imagine the that. British flu. Yeah, it's just terrible. Uh, it's a conversation, but it just shows you the political comparisons we have today. You know how America, nobody wanted to blame. China, China, China. Yeah. Look at us in South Africa. We reported this latest strain and we yeah. got the blame. I mean, it's yeah. just incredible. The South African flu. Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, God. But just, but so yeah. that, that allowed me to actually do something. And next thing, I'm doing talks to talks to um, Japan, the Philippines, to yeah. America. We, we had this thing, and I wasn't a medical expert, but I could do comparisons in terms of what was happening then and what's happening now. And also, the main thing is we will get through this, as we are doing now. You know, we're not, we're not thankfully, we're still yeah. wearing masks in South Africa, yeah. but unfortunately, but yes. we are coming through it now. Our kids are going back to school. So I did that on top of the hill in, uh, <laughs> in, in the middle of nowhere. And the other yeah. thing was, as I said, the rugby interview. So I kept okay. myself busy. But to answer your question about the book, that's yeah. after after um, lockdown finished, yeah. a lovely lady called Lisa Kerr, who runs the Victoria Manor in Craddock. Dear oh, old wow. Craddock. Yes. Yes. There's a couple of roads there. That got, is, is, is that the one with the with the whole street full of houses? Is that, is that the one? And is, is, it, is that the Victoria Hotel on, is. on, the, on the side? It is. Oh, we have got a picture somewhere, Gary. I love it. We've got a picture that. of Market Street somewhere uh, of Craddock. Oh, uh, Gary's, um, Gary's busy with his headphones. He's, he's, he's busy doing Gary. his thing there. The pictures will come in a bit. Yes, the yeah. pictures will be there. But, but no, no, I've been there. We've actually stayed there. We did a, we, we did a gig in the, I was in the town hall, and I think that burnt down. Guys, I don't know. You can you can let us know, but I think that town hall burnt you, down. Are you thinking about Kamani, Craig. Queenstown? 
Is it, was it Queenstown Town? Oh, okay, okay. I don't know if, if Craddock's Town was No, Craddock, like Craddock, well, he's got a lot of problems, Craddock. I always say that the, the potholes are as big as the welcome in Craddock. Oh. They, I mean, if they've got potholes, you literally, you have to lift your car out of the thing. But no, to go, to go back to it, Lisa said, mm. why don't you, what you did with Mikey's Fontaine, you did a lot of stories, you put the place on the map, would you yes. not come to Craddock? So we ended wow. up... Never invite Dean and his family because we were going for two weeks. We ended up staying for two months. <laughs> and, uh, and, and it was lovely because we then I realised that there was so much history in the Eastern Cape. Yeah. So it brought me back. And then I started to travel to all these little dorpies and things yeah. like that. So when the pictures come up, I'll explain. Yeah. We've got so many wonderful images within the book. And I wanted to call it Frontierland because I can see some of the questions. Why did yes. you move to Port Elizabeth? Well, because this is the frontier. Yeah. This is really where the country was moulded. I mean, the Great Fish, Fish River is just just up the road. Just there. And this is where the Europeans and the Khoisan nation, yes. and the poor old Khoisan were kicked out, and it was all fought along the frontier. So interesting. They're, they're, they're so, as, well. as a historian, this is fantastic. Oh, there we go. This, well, this is, this is Mikey's Fontaine. So oh, Mikey's Fontaine. This is Mikey's okay. Fontaine. So that's Mr. Yes. and Mrs. Allen. Is that right? Back, back, in, back in February. That's, that's, oh, nice. that's the love of my life, Danny. She's, um, <laughs> she's my rock. And I know she's watching there with... Uh, with little Daniela in the uh, Daniela as well, yes, of course, yeah. it, which we'll talk about in, in, in a little while. Uh, there we go. There's the book that's still, on, sti that's still on the shelf, which is, I don't care what any author says, when you still you still want to look for your book in the bookshop. Yes, yes it's your bus. It's your bus. <laughs> so, no, that was great. I mean, Jenny Cross Williams, the book lady, said to me, Dean, if you sell, if you sell, um, 2,000 copies, but we've got yeah. to 15,000 now. And there's yes. this day in history, which is, which is obviously what, we, what we're working with. I at the like moment. But Frontierland, I, all yes. the pictures, including those on the cover, I've taken with my, my iPhone. So wow. my designer says, Dean, won't you get a proper camera? But to be quite honest, you See, know, that's a great picture. They're, they're beautiful, aren't they? It's a lovely picture, I would say. Designer, no way, I'm not spending that money. No, no, I'm glad <laughs> where, you Where's that road? Where, where is that road? So the road on the left is near, um, it's going up towards Craffernet, and the one oh, on the right, that's near Lady Grey. Oh, and um, my third, there's a third book coming out, volume three, and that's going to be at the Valley of Desolation near okay. Craffernet. So I, for me, it had to be a picture book. It's not a heavy book. It's, okay. not, a, it's not an academic book. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's going to these little towns that places, you know, places yeah. that, were forgotten, that were forgotten. Yeah. And you go to a place like Stainsburg or Hofmeyer, and yeah. there was tumbleweed going through the road. Yeah. There was nothing there. But you look, and the buildings are magnificent, but they just forgotten and derelict. Yes. And I thought, do you know what? Somebody needs to tell their story. Yeah. And that's what, I, that's what I do in these books. I try to give it the place of book. And you find, have you been through a lot of places? I mean, I know that uh, places like um, Prince Albert and, 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 and uh, uh, Grayton and those yeah. places in the Western Cape, yeah. they, they've really Regenerate. taken a regeneration. Look at that, there we go. There's now, here's a, here's a man who's, uh, this is Lord Charles Somerset. Oh, yeah. enough, I'm from Somerset, but this man was the Cape Governor between 1814 and 1826. Yes. And he's the man who was responsible for bringing all the Englishmen down here. Oof, so he right. brought the he was, he encouraged the eighteen twenty settlers, and we know they're they're important in this in this yes. part of the in this part of the world. And as you can see, there are alternative pictures I try to use. I mean, can yes. you imagine in eighteen twenty, Gina, yeah. being on a boat from a, a, I don't know a Bristol or a London? Yeah. You don't know where you're coming. You're desperate. You're with your family. You get dumped in the middle of the Eastern Cape. And I tell you what, the animals are the least of your worries yeah. because you've got warrior tribes. You, you don't know how you're going yeah. to grow your food and you are left to fend for yourself. Dumped out. These dude. are incredible people. So yeah. these kind of stories, I mean, it just lends itself to wonderful history. It is. But it remember, is. you've got, then of course, you've got opposition. This yes. is Chief Sandili, one of the okay. great cause of chiefs. Yeah. Now, there were nine frontier wars fought in this area. And as you know, when you explore, you can still see the forts, you can yeah. still visit these battlegrounds. So for a historian like me, I can still sense yes. that, that, that tension in the air. Yes. And it means, it means it's even more important, we're talking about this project I'm doing with my yeah. cause of friends, that yeah. we're going to look at our shared history and yes. appreciate that. Yes. Because at the end of the day, this is our land and we've all fought over it. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I've got to be very respectful for everyone's kind well, of Well, I think, uh, it, it, like, like we were saying, politics and history are interwoven. I mean, the, the history that, we, that I learned at school was just one-dimensional. You know, it was that one-sided yeah. history. Yeah. And, um, and, and I, it's, it's so, it, it, like, uh, this kind of thing interests me so much to find out what the Costa were doing. Yeah. How, where did they, uh, you know, what, were they, what was their plan? How did they, um, how did they respond? You know, all, and, and the real feel. 
you know, because history is real. Yeah. It's not, you yeah. know, when you learn it at school, sometimes you just feel it, you, 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 you wash yeah. over. Yeah. But it's real people. You need to tell the stories. And uh, remember, the past is what's happened. History yeah. is what historians have written. Yeah. And generally, it's people like myself, you know, white yeah. middle-aged yeah. men yes. that have written this story from their own perspective. Yes. And it's important that the other different communities in South Africa, they record their history in different ways. Yeah. Often it's oral, it's not written yeah. down. Okay. So their history tends to not be, be overlooked. But now, yeah. thankfully, in the, the new South Africa, we're trying to encompass everybody's story. Mm -hmm. And remember, it's, a, it's, a, it's not even a case of who was here first, because if that's yeah. the argument, then our <laughs> Khoisan, the, the yeah. hunter-gatherers, they were here first. Yeah, yeah, you right. know, we're all interlopers into this beautiful yes. country we call South Africa. Yeah. So this tension that sometimes we feel when we rename places and we yeah. look at ownership and land, land yeah. rights, of course, it is really problematic. Really? But I believe, hopefully, if I can just do a little bit to, mm. to explain the past and highlight, not in an academic way, not yeah. in a serious way, but highlight that this is, these are true human stories, yeah. then people can relate to that. And perhaps they can approach them with less hostility and a little yeah. bit of softness. This, by the way, is yeah. where I was inspired. This was the map of Africa. This is Wilderness Beach, Wilderness. Which, is, which is the Western Cape. Um, and this is where we were privileged enough to spend six months of the lockdown. You can imagine, I didn't yeah. want lockdown to, to end. I used to run the fields, I swam in the sea. Lovely. I was like Huckleberry Finn, <laughs> I tell you. I was like, it was one Damn you, Dean. I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This, there is, we go. this is Market Street. Now, this okay. is Craddock. This is what inspired me. Lisa Kerr and her mum, Sandra Antrobus, they're wonderful people. You yeah. find that in these little towns. Yeah. This is a street as it was a, would have looked in the 1840s and 1850s mm. when Craddock was the centre of the routes to the north. Yeah. And these houses, each one has their own story. Would you believe there's a house there where the first ever Victoria Cross winner, Vic, uh, William yes. Folds, yes. lived? You can stay in that house. There's another house called the Lion, Lion Cottage, and this is where a Danish family lived back in the 1850s. And you know how they made the money? They used to capture wild animals, lions specifically, and send them back to the zoos of wow. Europe. Wow. Can you? Jesus. So as a historian, I can walk that street Jesus. and tell people the stories. It's Jesus. fantastic. Right yeah. up, right in the middle of these. And, and you can see I get everywhere. Ooh, I'm dangerous. Up yeah, I know. I know. Don't let me loose because I'll get up on the roof. That's that's the Mudderkirk or the Mother Church of Cranach. Yeah. That was built. That, that was built it. in 1868. It took three years to build. Do you know how much it cost? Can have a guess. £35,000, which was a lot of money. At wow, that, that is plenty for them. And it was, it was actually built on a, a copy or plans of St. Martin's in the Field at Trafalgar Square, oh, wow. which is quite, quite incredible. They say that the Dumini, or the vicar, yeah. had an English wife, and when he gave her the choice of the plan, she went for the English design. So yes. any, any of my London friends, you can probably recognise that it looks design. more like a church, she would have said. Quite yeah, magnificent. Right. <laughs> but this place, Bedford. Bedford. Now, Bedford is the, the story of the town that really has given me hope because Bedford, unlike a lot of the places, has regenerated itself. It's come back to life. And do you know why? Because of a school. Education, wow. for me, is the most important thing yeah. in the future of South Africa or any country. And because Bedford has got a successful school, the young people have moved back to this community and okay. the town is flourishing. Wow. So, and you can see that School pattern. town. That's fantastic to um, use. I mean, you know, I mean, here in Quebec, we've got yeah. wonderful schools. Gray, Collegiate, Pearson. We've got these wonderful schools. As long as our schools remain healthy, this town yes. will have a future. That is the key to yeah. it, really. Um, yeah. There is the school itself. People travel from as far as Somerset East, which is you know, an hour's drive to go to this school. And now it means it's the young design. Yeah, 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 no, people, yeah. people are actually, you know, and the, the town has developed. So as I traveled the, the area, Gino, you know, I could see a pattern. Uh -huh. I could see that I wasn't just talking about doom and gloom. I could yeah. actually see seeds of hope, growth, where towns, apparently Bedford back in 2000s, yeah. it was a place you just drove through. It was also rack and ruin. But local people believe in the place and started to invest in it. There's also a garden festival there, which may, may, means oh, that everybody yeah. looks after their garden. So everybody looks okay, um, yeah. spick and span. So they sell, they sell flowers and seeds and plants. Well, no, they, they basically, there's a garden show. So oh, it means oh, your, so garden, your garden is on show. On show. Oh, my word. Well, they should add them into wine. So that's what they'll be like. Uh, I, I think this picture, anybody... Oh. 
I mean, it's iconic of the trans Come yes. on, where is it? Uh, Hol- no, no, Hol- no, it's um, no. Morgan Bay. No, uh, the big one, Port St. John's. Port St. John's, okay. Port St. John's. Well, Morgan Bay is very similar. <laughs> it's always, this, there's always a cow on the beach. Always, <laughs> always. And this is, I didn't have to wait for this cow. You literally have to push them out the way to oh, get no. to the sea. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. No, it's, so no, it's, it's a beautiful same. place, but it's uh, nearest you can get to the Caribbean in South Africa. I'm sure there's that kind of haze of Dhaka in the air. <laughs> Everybody's kind of laid back. <laughs> but split. again, a colonial kind of place that's gone through yeah. transition but the tr- for me the tr- the trans sky in these wide open areas i think the next picture you can see um yeah. how people live oh yeah now now for me it's driving through the trans sky, the trans that's, sky. What you see. that's what you see look at the space that people live Incredible. they live a simple life but a very happy life yeah. now imagine a lot of these people have to come to the cities johannesburg yeah. cape town durban and live on top of each other in the settlements how they mm-hmm. how they do that and how they don't turn on each other in bigger numbers i yeah. do not know yeah. so it shows the incredible pride that these people must have and, and only by travelling into the, these rural areas was I getting a sense of, of, of that. Yeah. And, and do you know the beautiful thing, Gina? Now I'm getting approached by these communities to start telling some of their stories and be oh, the mouthpiece wow. of that. In fact, I would love to hear. I would love no. to hear their stories. Yeah. No, there, there, there's, the, there's the coming up, and I, I hope they don't mind mentioning it, but the Makoma, yeah. Chief Makoma, is the 150th anniversary of his death. The Makoma family have approached me to speak at the celebration in September, which is quite quite humbling. Yeah, um, I think I think uh, the, the 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 lady in, in charge of the of the of the of the tribe there, the, the yeah. clan. She she uh, she's a bit of a follower on Facebook, <laughs> and she said to her she said to her daughter in Anise, find this man. He must come and speak at our celebration. Oh, man, which, that's which is, fantastic. Which yeah. is amazing, isn't it? Yes, yeah, that's yeah, the, Eastern the Cape community. community. Yeah, and I, I, I love that. And I, love I love will it. sit back and I will listen and I will observe. As, yeah. uh, you know, observe. Yeah. And be yeah. a be a vessel for their information. For sure. You know, not impose my view. Yeah. This is this is Kumani or Queenstown okay, where they Queenstown. had the fire. Okay. And the interesting thing about this is the town hall. The interesting thing about Kumani here is um, if you can put the next one up, please. Yeah. It's uh, it's the do you know Queenstown is designed in a hexagon. Yes, the hexagon, the hexagon hotel. Yeah. Uh, wasn't it? Uh, I mean, okay. you can imagine driving around there, you're always turning sort of yes, right or left. Yes, but that was designed back in the frontier days for almost the lager mentality. It wow. means you defend the centre of the town. And when you realise this, you think, OK, you're touching history. And again, Kamani, Queenstown, these are the two you know, names yeah. that, are, that are being contested yeah. at the moment. And we have to appreciate the different history yeah. that yeah. You know, this represents. Makanda, just up yeah. the road, Grahamstown. <sighs> Yeah, yeah. That's good. King Williamstown as well. So right? yeah, no. For me, it's it's fundamental. These yeah. guys, I've just got to give these a mention. Wonderful. <laughs> this is a, this is in a place called Uchi. Yugi. Yugi. But yeah. I say Uchi. Uchi. Okay. Th- that okay. man, a Scotsman. Again, the Scots again oh, okay. in South Africa. <laughs> that's that's William Murray, and he founded Uchi because it reminded him oh. of the 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 river in Aberdeenshire. Yeah. And um, these two guys, I wandered up to the church as I did, and they were there, and they were such pride. And the guy on the right said to me, Dean, will you just come in? And I took pictures, yeah. and they said, he said, you know, my great-great-grandfather brought William Murray to this area and founded this area. Wow. So I realised that the local communities have so yeah. much uh, so much pride for yes. this as well. And, and, and they know the history as and well. You, and you, and it, and was, that, that, was that Murray there in the, in the corner? That's Murray in the corner. Uh, so he looks uh, a wily old boy, doesn't he? Does he does. <laughs> Interesting little history. Lovely, stuff. lovely story here. Um, yes. A place called Sturksprate. And yeah. these wonderful people. For me, it's all about the people. Sturkstrom and Sturksprate. Sturksprate, right up there in the borderland. And okay. uh, these lovely people, um, Chris and uh, Annarie Ustazen, they founded uh, the, the, the school in Sturksprate. Okay. They've given the community, through their own pocket and hard work, they've given the community hope. Do you know that doctors and lawyers and airline pilots have come from this school? Wow. It's in the middle of nowhere. And these are the kind of stories I wanted to tell. And these are inspirational, these kind of people, which yeah. are amazing. So these are the stories that appear in Frontierland. But that's your friendly South African vibe. That's totally, and then the Eastern Cape is, is, uh, is integral. Do you recognize that young man? Oh yes, that looks like uh, Nelson. That's Nelson Mandela, the University of Fort Hare, where he yeah. was only for a year before he fled up to Johannesburg, because you know why? They were trying to get him married off. They were going oh, to try wow. to get young Nelson married off. He didn't want none yeah, of that. So he went off to Johannesburg. But the University of Fort Hare, again, it comes back to education. Alice, the town of Alice, which they're yeah. talking about renaming Makoma. Oh, Mok- Look at the timing Mok- again. Mok- yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, is, is fundamental, of course, to Eastern Cape education. So yeah. for me, just to visit these towns and get that kind yeah. of different vibe. 
And um, yeah. no, no, for me. It, while we've got these pictures, well, we can put some, maybe some comments too. While mm. while, while we go, this, renaming. Oh, there we this go. This is it. Now I just got to show you yeah. now. That's my friend Lally Boy. Now yeah. I mean, okay. look at how cool does he look? <laughs> Eh? He's, he's my friend. He's the South African Snoop Dogg, as you can see. Yeah, I can see that. But yeah. but Lally will come at this history from a different perspective. Is he, he from here? He's from here. He's, he's from, from Eastern Cape. Okay. So for the Makoma celebration, Lally's going to come down and we're going to visit the family and uh, we're going to okay. tell some stories. And for me, what an education. I'm just going to yeah. listen to these people. Um, so as you can see, it's a positive discussion about yeah. our shared history and culture because we share yeah. this history. We share yeah. this culture. And, 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 you know, everybody, almost everybody is an is a, um, uh, immigrant, you know. Yeah, uh, and there's so many countries in, in, in the world, that America particularly, is always uh, blowing that trumpet of, of, of the, um, the fact that they're a country of immigrants. Yeah. And, um, and you have to include everybody in that conversation. Yeah, no, no, definitely. So I hope people are, will embrace this idea. Yeah. I think it's something new. Um, I'm so fortunate to work with these guys. It's going to be quite a yeah. quite a learning curve for me. But to take this to schools and to yeah. corporates as well. I mean, everybody's talking about transformation. Yeah. I think it's the, I th perhaps if we can be the vehicle to take this into firms, you know, banks and schools yeah. and and uh, colleges, and so we can Just have open this conversation. conversation. Open it. Open yeah, it. For me, it's all about talking. The, I mean, what's happened to us here as well, and it largely is. is is the fact that nobody really thought any of this was going to happen, or they don't really get involved, and and if you don't get involved, you've got no say. You know, in the, in the end, it's like voting, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. So yeah. open that, those conversations before that before it even happens. Super. Let's talk about it. Yeah, it's yeah. totally yeah. right. Let, let's have a look at some of the. Oh, there's a oh, look. Oh, look at you. There I am again. Look at this. <laughs> now, this was an interesting one. This is at dear old Dale College in King Williamstown, or wow. Cons, as it's called now. Oh, there are a lot of Dale guys uh, on online. I'm, yeah, I'm sure. Guys. Hello, hello to the Dale College guys. And my, my good friend uh, Garth Shaw, who's a fantastic job as the headmaster there. Okay. Do you know, Garth said to me, talk about a stitch up, he said, Dean, he said, would you come and speak to the boys? They need cheering up. And I said, well, what's happened? Would you believe that that day that I spoke, that the government said that school sport was banned because of COVID? Oh. That Saturday, they were going to play their big match against oh. Queenstown. Queen's, Queen's the, the, the College. And so these guys were sitting thinking, oh, I don't care yeah. what you say to me. Yeah. I'm, but but I, I hope, I said to them, listen, guys, we will come through this. We've got to look at our history. But do you know what? They wore that badge with yeah. pride. I mean, look at that for a backdrop. Yeah. But that's one of those schools which has colonial, almost European you know, yeah, history. history, but yeah. now 98% are causal or African yeah, at that yeah, school. Yeah. So they're embracing the new, yeah. the new. And transformation is important for me. Yeah. And Garth understands that. One of the things I was asked to, uh, to speak at, at the Kingswood um, College Transformation Day, which was yeah. quite a privilege. Yeah. And the message I le left them with through sport, I said, if, if kids want to play soccer and basketball, give them that. Yes. Because at the moment, they're leaving schools yeah. because they're playing rugby and cricket and other stuff. Give yeah. them the sports they, they want love. to play. Yeah. That's transformation. Yeah. That's about culture. That's about respecting where their heroes are, their yeah. role models. And, and, and of course, if they, if they love the sport, they're going to play it. I mean, it's, it's, like, yeah. it's like my music, yeah, the music thing. You, you love, I love drums. I play drums. I, I want to play drums all the time. <laughs> it's true. There, there's another there's map. the map. Okay. So literally like um like the song says i've been everywhere man you know yes, yes. um it's uh i've been all around this uh, these are these are just for the first two books the gaps yes. are filled in in volume three wow, okay. my my mission was to go to the most obscure little places yes. i could find as you can see port elizabeth quebec or in east london yeah. i've kind of left them for other books yes, okay. i will do my work while i'm here but yes. the, the the smaller towns, you know, yes. the Aberdeens. Yeah, Aberdeen. There's another yeah. Scottish connection. Aberdeen. New Bethesda. <laughs> There's Maclean, a Lucy. Are you still East. watching Lucy? Lucy, that's for you. Um, yeah, no. For me, it's it's an incredible, diverse province yeah. which has English, Afrikaans, Corsa. You can see the influence of the Khoisan. Yes. You can see all these different influences through the language, through the buildings, through Cry the river, the fish, the, the mix. No, no. That, that's that, that was um, it's that a was frontier land. Yeah, frontier just land. Trying. And and you know, as you drive around front. it says frontier country on the yes, signs it does. doesn't it so that was always going to be my the idea yes. for the book so um let's have a look at some of the some of the comments before we before we uh, fall behind too far yeah um we've got uh, i see chantal abel is it a uh, good evening guys saying blessings just love gina spot making a difference in our city i hope so chantal loving the people 
Uh, thank you, Dr. Dean. Uh, Mikey Swantane was a special time. Paul Thompson. It was. He was my captain on the cricket pitch. He won't pick me again. I was awful uh, that day. Yes, uh, uh, I believe so. I mean, <laughs> there were some comments earlier about your cricketing yeah. skills. I talk a good game. I'm not necessarily <laughs> as good. I saw Garth Webster as well. also saying because he was you played a bit of cricket himself. And what will he It's little there as well. Um, Veronica Tinley. If I'm just, oh, there's some, some wood, yes, we've had that with that some wood buddies. Mariana Lawrence, I see the, uh, Mariana there too. Uh, uh, she's a lovely lady. Also, has been on, yeah, involved yeah, in radio yeah. as well. Uh, let's see, uh, who, who else have we got here? Um, I see um, uh, Bronwyn Leeching, who uh, lived in... Uh, we did in Poole, Dorset, for 15 years, so it's great to hear. Brit Exit. Yeah, well, I, I taught, and she'll understand this, I taught at uh, Bournemouth University for four oh, years. Wow, okay. I went back there between 2015 and 2019. Uh, the money was good. The, the, I even bought a new car, but I was miserable. I missed South yeah. Africa. I missed the sunshine. Bournemouth's beautiful. But then yes. it was no Cape Town, you know? It was no, <laughs> it was no Kings Beach. Yes. And I realised, how long have you been in South Africa? I've been here since the mid-90s. And yes. I flirted with other places. Yes. I went to Australia for a okay. year. Most nah. over, sorry, most overrated country in the world. <laughs> my, my, um, well, there's a lot of South Africans. There's a lot of competition in South Africans and Australians. I tell you, yeah. uh, William Hickrood, uh, the, the guy, uh, guide must be. Sir. This uh, that's it. Uh, yeah. uh, the guides are historians. Absolutely, William. Uh, you're quite right. And, and if you're a guide, you've got to know that history of that of that place. Yeah, very much so. Blisteringly hot in. And where's Ulster? What did you say? I, I don't know. Is that Ulster? In Ulster, 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 UK. No, they're having they're having some wonderful weather over in England. Solstice, summer solstice. But you know Wimbledon's starting soon, so it'll all break. Oh, it'll oh, start raining. Go. There's not more uh, right. rain dance than Wimbledon. You know that. <laughs> Neil Radford played oh, for yeah. England, cricketer. Wow, Neil Radford. Neil yeah. Radford I know yeah. the name. Nice as well. to see you, Neil. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, Murray Gardner. Hello, Murray. Murray, from Austin, Texas. So Murray is uh, Adrian's son, and yes. they just. Uh, they just travelled back to their other home, which is in Texas. So okay. nice to see you, the Gardner family. Lovely. So thank you. Uh, first soul sister. There we go. Watching from the UK as thank well. Thank you. Thank Stuart Potkitter watching from the USA. I always confuse him with Stuart Potkitter, this photography <laughs> guy. Stuart, I know who you are now. <laughs> thank you. Someone said, don't re remember yeah. the Rippons. I will remember oh, the those. Yeah? Yes. There are so many, so many people in this conservation story. I promise you, I'll try yes. my best. If anybody's got any suggestions, please send them in because yes. I'll try to get, get to all the people that played a role in this story. Yes. Thanks, Samantha. Very nice to have you on, on as well. Then. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, oh uh, about you know, Barry Richards and Brian McMullen. Yeah, mixing with the cricket royalty. Ooh, look at you. Yes, yes. yes. Barry well, Richards too. Brian awesome. bought the book, Empire War on Cricket, and as I delivered to him, we were going through, on the way, even before we got to the Eastern Cape, our, yeah. our, our spirits were lifted. We were going through Neisner, and dear Brian McMillan, as you know, one of the South Africa's greatest all-rounders, yes. I was just going to deliver him the book. He said, well, hang around, Barry Richards is yes. coming for dinner. Yes, he stays up there in Neisner. So, <laughs> there I am, there I am, I'm having dinner with all the cricket royalty so I mean I just thought you know what this is a great move this oh so, lovely yeah. well I'm sure they'll know all the, all the players that were on the Gino spot a little while ago we had the uh, the triple crown eight of them in the studio with us so you can have a look at that too but before we go any further yeah. before we go any further um, Gary can we uh, can we turn the tide so I want to ask Gino a few questions because he's asking yeah. me too many questions oh really so I'm going to just uh, <laughs> Because I'm used to doing interviews, you see, so yes. I'm going to know. And I know Jerry, Jerry warned me about this story. He doesn't story. know what I'm going to ask. They're not, they're not bad. Okay. There's a couple of things I wanted to. I tell you what, I hope I didn't look like that creature. It was no. awful, wasn't it? <laughs> But, um, I'm going to start with an easy one, and it's yes. and, 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 and it's got to be the right answer because mm -hmm. there is a right answer. Elvis or the Beatles? Beatles. That's the wrong answer. Beatles. I've got the, the, Beatles. It's behind you. That, you that, can see that. But, but he was called the King. Yeah, he was called the King. He I was know. called oh, the oh, King. Oh, there was oh, no oh, one else like the King. Oh, oh, All right, oh, we'll oh, agree oh. to disagree I on that. Beatles or the Stones? You know, Beatles or Stones? I'll take Stones. I'll no, I'm a, I listen. I've been to Graceland's twice. There's no one like Elvis. You know, I mean. No, look, I, I can I can get Elvis. You know, and, and to be honest, the first record I ever bought was an Elvis record. Okay, fair so enough. I'll, I'll give you that. No, he was he I'll was a, he was a, he was a, he was a frontiers man. He was there at the start. Yes, he was. He was. Second question. Yes. Your most most embarrassing moment on stage in front oh. of an audience? Oh, I don't know if it's 
ever happened to you, but uh, look, there have been a, quite a few of them, okay, quite a few times, but I remember the one, and it wasn't so much embarrassment as, because you always get through, uh, you know, when, you, when you're on a stage, there's always a way you wing it, you wing it through. There was ones where I, well, I couldn't wing it through, and, and one of my, uh, one of my, uh, the pegs on my, on my drum stool, I was playing drums with a band, one of the pegs at the back fell off, so I fell backwards. And, and my legs went up and I, and I fell off the stage and there was nothing I could do. <laughs> but but most embarrassing or most terrifying thing on stage is when you you get distracted. It, it doesn't happen often, but man, if you go blank, like, like there, there, there are moments where it can be 20, 10 seconds like that you're just trying to think what is what you're supposed to be saying. And I, I'll never forget I was doing a character on stage it was in front of 700 people or 800 people at the Baxter Theatre, triple, triple uh, tier theatre. It was amazing at the Jive Funny Fest. And uh, um, I was looking at this audience and they were so interesting. There were a whole bunch of interesting people. And, and my mind started to wonder. I told a joke and I got a, a laugh for the punchline, but I didn't realize what I just said. And so I, it was literally just my mind was, was just putting the words out there. And, and I got this laugh and I thought, hell, where am I? What did I say? <laughs> and for about 10 seconds, it was just terror. <laughs> and, I, and I somehow scrambled to the end of my, my, um, my, my script and, and, and found a place and then well, I found my way back and finally made it through, but it was terrifying. As, as a comedian, are you on autopilot? Because when I give talks, people say, how do you remember all the dates? How do you, you keep yeah. the narrative going? But you do, you go into a zone, don't you? Yes, there's, yeah. there's an element, there is an element of autopilot. And, and in that situation, it was almost all went too far into the autopilot yeah. and, I, and I, I wasn't concentrating. <laughs> No, well, that's not too bad, and I think yeah, yeah. I could imagine you kind of winging it. The third yeah. question, and it's a little bit more serious, but I want you to think yeah. about this. If we could resurrect the great man, Nelson Mandela, if we could bring him back for five minutes, how would you report the current state of South Africa to him? I said, he needs you back. <laughs> he needs you back. He needs you back. I tell you what, you are, there was something about Mandela that, that was a uniting, it was just a, a unity that he brought to everybody. Everybody, everybody sort of liked him in some way he was a people person he just you you almost knew his his integrity was intact always and he wasn't scared to say when he was wrong yeah. either so yeah we i'd say um, buddy we need you back or or who do we go to or who are your who are your real your guys you know who did you go to yeah. when you were here yeah yeah you we certainly we, cer we certainly miss him that's for sure yeah, but yeah. Uh, i think i think i don't know about you but i i i'm a i'm a positive person i'm glass yeah. half full i yeah. think we've got some incredible incredible people in this country yeah of you course know? we have we, and we, and we've we, got uh, those non mandelas they're all here yeah yeah, yeah. They're all yeah. here we've got, yeah. we've just got to find them then dig them out where are they where are these guys where are they hiding yeah, yeah. he's the inspiration well there you are i let you off yeah. quite easy you did it no it wasn't too bad at all <laughs> i tried to keep it quite clean hells yeah. bells <laughs> no oh man nice. and uh okay so i i uh, gary's got a rugby video the rugby the rugby or rugby rugby video he's written rugby so there, i'm, I'm assuming this will be the the spring box spring but yes, interviews that, interviews did, yeah. that you did. So you interviewed all the, the World Cup team? The, the 2007 World Cup team, really. And wow. uh, it was amazing. You talk about pressured moments. Yeah. So if you can imagine, we're doing this live. I had literally a tiny little iPhone and I was doing this through. And a funny story before you see the clip. We did such a good job of it and we got such a following that Supersport, which is the big uh, satellite yeah. sports channel here, yes. got to hear of it. And I got a phone call at quarter to ten at night from the head of operations saying, is that Dean Allen? I said, yes. Yeah. He said, we hear you're running a TV station. <laughs> and I said, I beg your pardon. I, and he said, um, but uh, he said, we'll allow you to interview these players for now. I said, I promise you. I said, I'm going to be no threat. I literally <laughs> was using my iPhone. But it was wonderful. We did wow. it for the charity. We did eight, uh, eight episodes of it over two months. And I promise you, it was, it was nerve wracking, but it's fantastic. What a privilege. And yeah. these men, all of them, were wonderful, wonderful human beings. I used to phone them yeah. up a week, a week before the interview to get to know them. And not once really did we talk about rugby. It was all about yeah. their situation because they were stuck at home as well. Yes. And I, I swear that the South African audience would tune in just to see how they lived and what was in the background. Yeah. And you saw kids running past and all this because it was real, wasn't it? Yeah. That yeah. Time. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if you can uh, put that Everybody up. Everybody was in the same boat. Uh, 
the winning goal, of course, and then we've got Osteran. So let's start off with the captain and introduce him here. Good evening, Francois Pina. How are you, my friend? Dean, um, good evening to you and good evening to everybody that have signed up. But the world didn't know how good that team was, basically because we just came out of isolation. We had, we had a, a tough patch to find our culture. Andre Jubé, the Rolls Royce of fullbacks. <laughs> I can go through that team. Osterand, double World Cup winner, an insane player. Mark Andrews was just in Quibus Visa, Ruben Kruger, then I got you, Van der Vestes, and that team was just a, a fa fantastic team. We've also got the, the, the man that kept you all in, in, under control at that time, the, the team manager, Mornay Duplessis. Mornay, are you in the room? Have we got you, uh, got you live and hooked up? Again, thank you for the opportunity and to be the 95 team dedicating also their efforts to, towards fundraising Thanks to the 95 guys and Francois and the team. No, it's a, it's an absolute pleasure to to do this. And as you said, it's a it's a wonderful sport, rugby, but it comes with its challenges, of course. And I think what the players fund do it, it's invaluable. Um, so we've uh, I think we've spoken to we've spoken to various parts of Cape Town. We're now we're now going to go to the most lovely part of South Africa, of course, the wonderful Free State. Us, are you in the room, my friend? Are you there? I'm here, Dean. Good. Lovely to see you. What I will say is last week I was interviewing John Smith. And do you know, he told me, he said, you can't have us on because he doesn't even have internet out there. I mean, what do you say to that? <laughs> yeah, obviously, they're always joking with me, um, you know, especially when in, in 2007, that era, um, John and the boy, John de Villiers, always joked with a, with a farming boy from, from the Free State. Uh, Joel, I'd like you to just mention another one of one of your teammates, Ruben Kruger, another man who was taken far too early from us. What was his special attributes in, in the squad and as a player? Yes, I think Ruben was was known as the silent assassin. He didn't he didn't say much. He was a real quiet guy. But um, the way I always like to think of a player like Ruben is he, he was one of those players you didn't want to play against. You know, when when we were playing provincial rugby and we were playing against his team, the Cheetahs or the Bulls or whichever team he was in. It was um, it was one of those teams where you thought, boy, this guy's going to cause carnage. He's he's quiet. He's got a low center of gravity. He steals balls. He's a strong carrier. Carrier. He's got a little mean streak. He you know he gets the elbows in and he's robust. He's always tough and difficult to play against. Uh, it's got to play on the left end. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Oh, are we, are we, oh, yeah, we've got sound there, Gary. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bottom left is the player. The yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. Now, right, what so there was, what was Stransky. Oh, and, and what, what a bunch of guys. Do you know what? That 95 um, win, as people know, I mean, you remember the film Invictus. Um, mm -hmm. um, it was uh, it inspired a Hollywood movie. You know, Matt Damon playing uh, yes. Frank Barpino there. Yes, course, and uh, Morgan Damon. Freeman playing Man Mandela. And uh, mm -hmm. no, Clint Eastwood was the director. Yeah. But... What an incredible, humble bunch of guys. Yeah. And um, I mean, we can probably overplay it. In terms of sports yeah. history, 95, South Africa was at a crossroads. Yeah. So you had Mandela putting on a Springbok jersey, presenting yeah. the World Cup to an Afrikaner, a white captain, yeah. who understood what this moment meant. Yeah. And here I am interviewing four of them. Jeez. And the, the beauty of it, Gino, yeah. I've got some really good rugby friends or big rugby friends, and they yeah. said, Do you know what? We've heard those guys speak but some of the stories they'd never heard before. Yeah. Because I think, because they were in their home environment, because it was COVID, mm -hmm. they were really relaxed. Yeah. Um, so you've got, got, them, got the good side. But talk about nerve wracking. I mean, you're there, you're there on a mobile phone. You're having yes. to, but Francois Pinot, he was the captain. Yeah. He took control of the whole situation. And uh, no, the delightful, delightful men. And as I said, um, we had eight weeks of those interviews, and I'd yeah. never have got that opportunity if COVID hadn't have been there. Yeah, they, it would have gone to a, it would have gone of course, to a super, super sport, sport or, yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A Dan Nickel or someone yes. like that. You know? So you've got the beast on here as well. Did you also do the beast. I did the beast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Mantua, Mantua Mantua Riva. Let's have a look. Of physicality, you know, uh, on the on the sporting field. Yeah. Well, well, let's face it, talking of physicality, I mean, that not that where the nickname Beast came in primary school? Perhaps you would, you would have made a good goalie, but wasn't it your, your, your friends at, uh, at primary school decided you were, you were getting a bit, bit of a handful there, so they gave you that nickname? <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, my, I got that nickname you know, when 
and I was uh, around about that age in primary school. And uh, yeah, like I said, I was a bit of a man child, so I was bigger than the rest of my peers. <laughs> and uh, you know, my my friends kind of you know I got together and I tried to come up with a nickname for me. And I think X Men came into the picture. And then before I knew it, yeah, you know, they called me Beast, and then it kind of stuck, you know, until now. So it's pretty crazy. <laughs> Great. Well, I was I. He's, he's such a shy guy. Amazing. So he's a Amazing. shy guy. Because uh, you know, I've, I've done a gig with him when he did a talk. Yeah. And he was so nervous for doing, doing the talk. Such humble men, though. Lovely, you know? lovely. Like, like, that's something about rugby. It's something yeah. special about it. And so respectful, you know. Yes. And, uh, we're all in the, we felt like we were all in the same boat because we're all stuck at home. We're all bored out of our heads, you know. And, yes. and this thing, and they, but they had such, um, such respect for the, for the charity, which was great. You know? yes, they so all just, said yes, you know. Absolutely. I don't know about the current team. Though. Obviously, they're under contract and whatever. Yeah. But that generation, the 2007 boys, yeah. amazing, brilliant, brilliant guys. Let's have a look at, at, at the, some of the comments, and then we're going to then we talk about your baby because okay. this is this yeah. is an incredible story. Um, it's uh, Sue Rose. Do you spread the words about about the beauty of your friends and uh, they say it to your always, friends. always do it. Yeah, yeah, and you're going to be a, a, a marketing uh, person there. If name changing is looking at the meaning of new names in towns and city. Uh, for the most part, uh, represented the place in the local language. Uh, you know, um, it's true. You, you've got to look at you've, everybody's got to be a part of it. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's got to be a part for, of that. For me, the thing. discussion is the important thing yeah, here. Yeah. You know, let's talk about it. Let's let's be inclusive. Yeah. What's the greatest thing about Port Elizabeth? Well, Anton, um, you're one of the guys. Uh, the people, yeah. the people. Yeah. Um, there really is. Uh, you know, they live up to the reputation, the friendly city. Ever since we've been here, extended welcomes, people have introduced other people. Um, and uh, we went to the uh, Anton and Christine's house the other day. I mean, I had the most magnificent Mexican Sunday lunch. I mean, Mexican <laughs> in Paul Lisbeth. Talk about cosmopolitan. But no, we, like we are so, really, so happy here. So happy. Fantastic. Oh, look at Sue Rhodes with her controversial surname. Sue, you do. You do. But uh, let's see if, uh, let's see what they'll do with the Macanda with that one. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, that's so awesome. It's wine guy. I heard about Mark, Mikey Fontaine for the first time only four days okay. ago. Didn't you know the song? Come on, you've got to get the Dose book. Das train, das a train, no Mikey's Fontaine. <laughs> Tracy Mace says, uh, uh, what is your option of, uh, uh, your opinion of, of metal detecting? That's an interesting brain. story. Well, yeah. th the, one of the things about Mikey's Fontaine is you can still go out into the felt, into the, yeah. into the field and pick up the bully beef cans, the bullets, the shrapnel mm. from the, the soldiers that were there. There were 10,000 Imperial troops and 20,000 horses in a wow. two month period. Can you imagine the mess they must have left? Yeah, I mean, you sure. don't clean up after no. yourself. So you can go out there and see this, you know, yeah. Victoriana lying in the yeah. felt. So metal detecting certainly has its role because you can yeah. unearth those kind of, of objects. But are the they guys doing that for solidly there? Or well, or please keep it amongst yourself yeah. because I think it's quite sacred to leave the yes. stuff there. But I've been yeah. guilty of taking the odd thing. And I remember one yeah. story I, I went, I, I saw a little like lookout post and I climbed up to it. I've got this thing about climbing up high oh, mountains geez. and I've got to get to the highest thing. Yeah. And uh, I, it was all overgrown and I went inside, a beautiful kind of, uh, the wall had been made and whatever, and I looked in, under the undergrowth and there was a bully beef can opened. Oh. So the two British soldiers who were obviously stationed there yeah. that day, they'd had their, had their meal yeah. and then moved up, maybe lost their life in the South African yeah. War. So you just cover it up and leave it there because wow. it's sacred. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so those kind of things, I mean, they make me shiver. That, that's what history's yeah. about. You can see it, you can feel it. Yeah, that's amazing. I love it. And, and, and just the real people. I mean, the, the, the stories of those soldiers and those people that were there. And, and, and I would, that's why I would also love to now hear also the stories of, of, um, of, of those wars on, on both sides. Yeah, yeah. To hear about what those, what those the, the, the people actually did. And I wish you had diaries or, you know, to, to see these things. When you, when you read somebody's diary, then it really does give you a good uh, indication of their, of their home life, where they came from. They came from a farm, they came from a thing. You know, where, what they doing? I, I think sharing that, that information is so important. Um, Lali and Lazoli, who are working with me on the Renaming South Africa mm. project, they recently came to one of my talks in Johannesburg, and it was, it was, it was quite moving. At yeah. the end, end of it, Lali said to me, he said, you know what, Dean? We, I've learned so much from you tonight. We've been brought up to think that the white man is here to perhaps take from us mm -hmm. and to destroy. But what I heard from you tonight is the passion, the, the, the investment and the history that, that the Europeans yeah. have in this country. 
yeah, yeah. and that's the dialogue that we need to see yeah. you, their point of view, our point of view, our shared point of view, yeah. to have that discussion. Quite often here in South Africa, we're very careful because yeah. of the of the past of not having that discussion. Yeah. And I believe we're at, at a stage now where the Rainbow Nation is gone. You know, Medina, mm, yeah. the whole yeah, the whole honeymoon period is yeah. gone. We've now got real issues. We've got real, real, um, yeah. you know, crisis. You know, we're, we're sitting here in, 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 in Quebec and now with, yeah. with the water almost gone. You know, yeah. and these are the real things. Yeah. So if you want to argue about names, it comes yeah. down to the fundamentals. We need to look at our history and yeah. things like that. And so, also there's no argument to say that, that, that this name changing thing is just taking too much money and too much thing. And so I get that too. But um, what I would really actually, I, I, I'm, and I want to get uh, possibly Christian Martin, who was the guy that um, that was spearheading the, uh, the 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 fight for the name Kabecha, and he had Kwesen roots, and and I'd love to hear from someone like that with passion about see side, you know, see what because there's been so much um, there's been so much opposition to, to to the name change here as well, and I'd love to hear from from you know from the horse's mouth to hear that, that passion coming and why why he's just, he fought for it. Um, you know what the real story is, and, and then I can un- and then I can start to to understand as well. The first, you know, because often you say, "Oh, well, nobody can pronounce it," you know, whatever. But but it's not it's not about just that. You know? And in any any form of life, discussion, yeah. Yeah. conversation is healthy. It's healthy. It, it, it's healthy. You le- it leads to understanding. I'd love um, to get him on the show. We'll see. Yeah. Maybe yeah, we'll get our Christian should. Martin on the show for us. Yeah, look, Yolanda yeah. Bukani. We're going to get Yolanda on as well. She's from Alice. And she's uh, she's a one of our brand ambassadors. Oh, she's what such a lovely lady, yeah, she, 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 such she, a she, great. She huh? did. You she introduced. Her. She introduced us uh, actually. Thank you, Yolanda, for introducing us. Uh, Thank you. Uh, it's it's been an um, amazing ride. And uh, uh, my Gina, I see she calls me Gina. Of course, you know, because I'm special. I'm oh, special. Hilary Pringle, hey, welcome. Hope you've been to Adelaide up to, up to the Winterberg. Adelaide appears in uh, in the book. Um, so yeah, Excellent. of course, I've been to to Adelaide. Oh, and, your uh, daughter's oh, fast asleep. Oh, Daniela is fast asleep, which is nice. So <laughs> your daughter. Let's have a quick quick look at some of the other other comments oh, just before we, before we, we get to your daughter. We are we'll going go. on to my daughter. My yes. Daughter. Oh, there we go. A little turtle. Oh, there we go. <laughs> well, we may as well we may <laughs> let's let's talk about it, Jenna, because. Maybe something that happens when, when um, you know, uh, so, something that amazing that happens that not necessarily pushing in the right way. <laughs> you know? Well, I, I, I'm joking, but I can see it now. I think a lot yes. of people are waiting for the for this famous video. I mean, I'm yes. going to be not known as uh, Dean Allen, the historian. I'm going to be known as Daniela's father, I think. Yes, I think or, the, so. or, the ma- or the man that appeared in Speedos recently yes. on King's Beach, but that's another story. <laughs> Listen, my wife um, was the first thing she said when she saw that video. <laughs> So what the hell are you wearing? <laughs> yeah, I know. I didn't go prepared that day. That was the thing. It kind of makes it natural, but a, a bit. One of my friends said, uh, "Cute video, Dean, but we've got to have a word about your swimmers." <laughs> and I said, "Well, I didn't know it was going to go viral on the internet." But okay. there we are, so. Well, let's let's have a look at the uh, at the first video, and then and then you can explain. Okay, well, let's give us give us some context. What, what, okay. How did this happen? Okay, so anybody who doesn't know, I'm um, believe it or not, I turned fifty uh, in mm. July last year. So. Uh, I've had quite a big year, so not only have we moved, moved to Port Elizabeth, I got married, and we had a beautiful daughter last October, on the 8th of October. It's late, late starter. starter. Late, late starter. starter. They call it late lamaki, late lamb. Late here lamaki. In late lamaki, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, myself and, uh, and, and Danny, we had to do a lot of sort of soul searching and adjustment, but she has been an absolute blessing. She is such a little character. Everybody says that about their kids. <laughs> but this one... Um, she, we were, she, she's just into everything. She's so curious and we wanted to bring her up that way. She's in South Africa. She is literally taken with us wherever yes. we go. She loves people. So we're at the beach this day and we've only taken her to the beach once or twice. But this day, we put her down on the sand and off she went. <laughs> and um, I, I thought, this looks really sort of cute. And I, th- I said to Danny, she looks like a turtle. She looks like a little <laughs> turtle trying to get to the water. And, and the rest is history because, as I said, I put the video up thinking, okay, a few people will watch it. That was almost sort of eight, eight or nine days ago. We're over 20 million views on this video. 
20 million 20 views. 20 million views. On this so book. I can spend hours and days writing all this wonderful historical content, trying to, you know, add to education. And I promise you, listen to this, Gina, my following, which was quite big on Facebook, yeah. was, was about 22,000. Yeah. Since then, we just passed today in the last hour, 75,000 followers. Unbelievable. As a result of the Little Turtle video that you're going to see now, I'm sure. So. Let's have a look at the Little Turtle video. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> so again, she needs is a helmet and a, <laughs> and, a, and, a, and a camouflage and she'd be going to the watch, jungle. But you watch her speed up now, she looks good, she thinks, shall I go for it? And then she speeds up. This is the thing, she's thinking. You can think it. Am I going to go for that scene? Yes, I am. And you watch the speed. All right then. Oh, you, you, watch, you watch your sand spray in a minute, she's off. <laughs> but she looks back for Dad's reassurance any minute now. She's, watch this. She's just seen where you are. No, oh, she goes, off she goes. And then... Uh, 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 and, <laughs> and the cheeky smile. I, I, uh, I don't know who she gets that from. I think, um, I think probably her mum will say <laughs> me. I don't know. But um, no, the, the funny thing was about that. We had such traction and everybody kept saying, I mean, millions of people were watching this. And we had thousands of people saying, where's part two? What happened when the little turtle reached the sea? The problem was when the little turtle reached the sea, I was in my speedos. <laughs> Holding and uh, and that I'm afraid I never thought me and my speedos would be viewed by eight million people, but that's what's <laughs> happened as well. So it's, it's taken that's a lot of his own. Have you got the one of his speedo as well, Gary? Uh, uh, are you going to look oh, it up? Oh, thankfully well? not. Thank uh, you, Gary. I'm glad <laughs> you'll have to go online to watch the speedo, speedo one. Because let me tell you, my wife said as soon as she saw that speedo, I was like, what on earth? Is he wearing? Tell him he's got his no, sword. Out. He's Gary, Gary, please. The viewers have had enough tonight. Please <laughs> spare them. Spare them. But it just shows you, doesn't it, the power of social media. And, and the beauty yeah. is, tonight we've got an audience from all around the world. Yeah. They've come. They've watched. Um, they say you never work with animals and kids, but proves that you should because yeah. that's what they're doing. But for me, it's fantastic because. I want to show some of my personality online. Yes, you know, it's it's part of me. I'm a, I'm a family man now, and yeah. uh, got the most beautiful wife and beautiful daughter. But I've got a feeling she's going to become more popular at some stage because uh, <laughs> I think people are waiting for the next baby video. Our little baby turtle, as she's known. It's unbelievable. Twenty million Incredible. views, and, Incredible. It, and I mean that, that must have created like a, a whole. Mm. Your phone must have gone crazy. My phone every every day. I think I've got about three hundred WhatsApps that are not answered. I'm getting. Wow messages from Bangladesh, from Trinidad, from Canada, from the United States, from Australia, um, saying how cute is your baby and those kind of things. And I, I don't know, I'm a bit, I'm a bit reserved, I'm a private person, I don't know whether to put that out, but how beautiful is that? And yes. you know, I think we had something like 90,000 comments and only two people said, oh, should you allow your baby on the sand because of the bacteria? And I thought, do you know what? Bacteria? No, I thought, they need bacteria, come on. What can you do for me? Otherwise, you're going to end up with another, no. another COVID. No, no. You're, you're a dad. It's yeah. one of the best places to grow up in South Africa oh. because you experience nature, isn't it? Yes. And that baby, she, she's going to grow up speaking Slovakian, Afrikaans, English. She's got a choice of living here or going back to Europe. I hope she lives here because yeah. uh, that's where we are. But uh, what a place to grow up. And, yeah. uh, and we go back to education. I still believe we have some of the best schools in the world here with old fashioned values and I'm looking forward to really growing in this yes. country. Yeah. It's a lovely place to bring it's a lovely place to bring up children, you know. Well oh, that's it. You're sounding <laughs> old now, aren't we? <laughs> 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 and I know uh, I've got I've got the second little uh, getting to know you part to, to sort of round it off nicely okay, for this. Uh, it's a, a couple of getting to know you, but now I want the getting to know you section, please. I want the little introduction. There we go. Get to know you, get to know all about you. <laughs> Julian, wonderful. <laughs> I like this. Okay, so uh, what makes your favourite place that you've ever been to better than all the other places that you've been to? Well, I've said it before, South Africa yeah. and its people. Yeah. Um, when I first arrived in the 90s, the hospitality, the fact that it was spontaneous, people would open their doors. Yeah. I often say here in South Africa, people will offer you a meal and a bed, 
you know, at the drop of a hat. Whereas often, yeah. I, can I say this about Britain, we're quite reserved. We tend to go to a pub to meet. Yes. It's a public place. Whereas here, I felt like there was a really warm welcome. And I also, it was a place where people, I could, I could kind of give an opinion and people listened. Yeah. You weren't taught that a lot of the time. So no, yeah. um, so that, I've been to some beautiful places that I've been, you know, and I still, the, the world's out there and I'm gonna take that little baby and my wife with me and uh, we're gonna travel. <laughs> but no, South Africa, because yeah. of its people. Yeah, oh good, good. Uh, the worst job that you've ever had. Oh, this is a good one. You're going moan now. <laughs> here we go, it, it, it was a rotten job as well. Um, yeah. And it goes back to how I met my wife. Uh, I come from a town called Minehead, and Minehead, for the British audience will know, is famous for a place called Butlins Holiday Camp. Okay. Butlins is an old-fashioned holiday camp that was created in the 1950s after the war. Yeah. And 8,000 people each week go to this camp. It sounds like a concentration oh, okay. camp, okay. <laughs> but it's a holiday camp, I promise you. And uh, my wife, um, and there were a lot of Europeans, she's Slovakian, there were Hungarians, Romanians, Polish, they were brought in because a, they're very good workers, but probably they don't ask for the money that the British do as well. We won't talk Brexit, that's another thing. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but Danny, wonderful, wonderful person. She was running probably the, 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 the best restaurant there. And anyway, I met her because of Butlin's Holiday Camp. But we go back to when I was 16 years of age. And I used to, and I was nagging my father because he knew the guy who ran the HR department at Butlin's. Now, back then, it wasn't so nice as it is okay, today. Yes, yes. And I remember turning up, and, I, and my dad made the call. And this guy said, listen, your boy better be prepared. I've got one job, but it's, it's the only job I've got. And I went in, and he said to me on the very first day, listen, you're going to do a job now that you'll never do again in the rest of your life. And he handed me a pair of dungarees, oh. and he handed me a brush, and I had to go and clean the toilets. Toilets? Ah, I and knew I, was that was The toilets was one thing. There was another one where I, I was down on my hands and knees. Remember, everyone's on holiday. And the worst thing is they gave you a name badge. My name is Dean. And I was, <laughs> and I remember this old lady cleaner. saying, oh, Shane, look at you down there. The best day, and I only lasted four days, Gina. Yeah, I'm not a it. hero. I just said enough's enough. The best day was picking up litter in the car park. That was oh, the highlight of my four like days. Your... <laughs> so, oh, no, Miss Dean. I'll pick up your litter and I'll clean your clean toilets. Clean your toilets. No, oh, yeah, nothing worse. Someone's so going to do it. That, you know, was, <laughs> that was, yeah, horrific memory. So Butlins has good and bad memories I for me. I get that mine head. I, I, there was a Monty Python sketch on mine head, actually. I what a Python fan with the, the, the by-elections and the way. <laughs> Probably was, yeah. John Cleese, he's a West Country yes, man. That's the way he would have gone there. Yeah, yeah Ah, it was very funny. Really. But it was a bit... <laughs> well, you can look it up. <laughs> um, the biggest, uh, biggest pressure moment that you've ever had. Uh, right, apart from appearing on the Gino show. Oh, yes. Course, um, <laughs> it, had to be, it had to be when, uh, when I went back to the UK and... Uh, um, the Empire War and Cricket had just come out and I thought, listen, we're going to make this big in England. It's about cricket. Everyone will want to see it. Yeah. And I remember paying a lot of money for an agent. Ooh. And I and I, this agent didn't get me much, but she got me one thing, an interview on national BBC radio, wow. on Radio 2 on the drive time. And I had three minutes and it was a live interview. And wow. the guy said to me before we went live, don't worry, but we're speaking to eight and a half million people. Eight and a half don't million worry. people. So I just literally had to think, I'm just speaking to you. Don't think about, yeah. don't swear, don't swear, please don't. And, I, and honestly, that was a pressure moment. And thankfully, he was very kind to me and we got through the thing. But talk about pressure. Yeah, yeah, Eight million is. people listening wow. to every word. You see too, that, that is a big one. Yeah. That is a big one. And it's worth that, that two minutes or whatever. Two minutes. Like, ah! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Um, uh, your, your downtime. How do you spend your downtime? What do you do when you relax? Uh, well, at the moment we're not getting much sleep, so I'd like to say sleep, but I'm not. I'm not much of a napper. I mean, our, our little darling, she's a live wire in the day, so we uh, we, do, we take it in turns for the spare room, which is which is not conducive to a happy marriage. But we get our sleep. But no, um, I'm a big sports fan. I love I love exercise. Uh, I swim a lot. Um, hence the speedos. Oh yes, um, hence oh the yes. Speedos. The speedos. You do the oceans. Yeah, the yeah. Beach. No, I, I I love I love the gym. I love swimming. I love. I oh, still wow. try and play a bit of football and tennis. Okay. Um, I'm a Bristol City supporter, so I'm oh. long suffering. That's why I lost my hair. You know, yes. I just <laughs> I'm always supporting the underdog. Um, but, One day I'll take the cup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, but history, history is my passion. I mean, yeah, storytelling. Of course. I mean, you know, this isn't a job, is it? You, you, I mean, you do the job you love. You do the job you love. So that's my downtime. Yeah, sport and uh, and reading about history. And stuff. Love it. Yeah.
Um, <laughs> have you ever been in a car accident? Oh my goodness! Have I been in a car accident? Have I been in a car accident? Probably, oh, really? uh, probably one you've never heard of. Yeah. Um, when I was eighteen, I just passed my test. And I remember. You remember when you're eighteen, you, you want to yeah. drive your dad's car everywhere. Oh, yeah. You just want to take people. Yeah. And, and my sister wanted to go out, so I said, "Okay, I'll take you out." So I dropped her off in the local town, and as I was coming back, pitch black. It was the middle of winter, yeah. and where we live, close to where we live, there's a racehorse stable. Oh, yeah. And uh, my dad had a Sierra Sapphire. Do you know who oh, yes, the Sierra? The, 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 the one and, with the, and they're kind of they're curved, it, it, which they're, they're they're kind of smooth and curved. And thankfully, it probably yes. saved my life that night because as I went round the corner, there were four racehorses in oh, the middle of the road. Man. And to this day, I can't remember what happened, but apparently, three ran back down the lane and one horse stayed there. I hit this horse; it went onto the roof. It oh. flattened the roof of the car. Jesus. The only thing I did was it, I knocked out my front tooth. So this is actually oh. a crown. It knocked me out and the tr car traveled about 50 foot and people coming the other way could see what happened. Shame. And I had concussion. But uh, yeah. that was my brush with death. I thank the Lord that he, yeah. he spared me that day. And, uh, and do you know what? The good old NHS, I was taken to the local hospital in Minehead, even after that incident, and I was discharged within the next hour because they said I was okay. Oh, man, after concussion. So, yeah, no, it was, uh, it was quite, 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 some, uh, yeah, quite some story. So, yeah, scary. yeah, yeah, yeah. scary. I remember the Sapphire was the, it's the, 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 the other sedan version of, right. the, of the Sierra. Yeah. Sierra. Great car. Well, Sierra I was like, yeah, car. We, we have a lot of Sierras here. And you bought a little bit. They're still running around, yeah. I can yeah, see they are. <laughs> Gary had one for a long time as well. We used to call, call it the cockroach pit. <laughs> oh, was it that bad, Gary? It was, it was just full of cockroaches. That's In fact, good. cockroaches got loose. <laughs> <one time. laughs> a few cockroaches got loose. Gary, that's nothing you can be proud of, cockroaches in your car. Now, <laughs> no, keep that quiet, though. It was terrible. It was terrible. Shame the late Sam Mini eventually got that car. Oh, oh, he oh, bought oh, it oh, from you. Oh, oh, the oh, yeah, cockroaches oh, flourished. <laughs> they flourished after Sam. You didn't it. charge him extra for the inhabitants, <laughs> no, Did you ever have a drop the mic moment? Ah, well, yeah, if those, those moments happen, I tell you what, talk about pressure situation, you know as a, as a speaker. Yes. Have you ever heard of a thing called Pecha Kucha? Pecha Kucha. Pecha Kucha as a speaker is like literally testing your, your skill. It's a yeah. thing that's worldwide phenomenon and basically um, it was developed in J Japan and it's both, you, you've all been to talks death by PowerPoint where somebody mm. has put a PowerPoint up and it goes on for hours. And but, in this service, oh, yeah, oh. this is thing and in this. Oh, you know, the Japanese said <laughs> enough is enough. One. Yeah, <laughs> enough's enough. If you yes. can't get your point across in six and a half minutes, you, really? you shouldn't be speaking. So Pecha Kucha is, is an entertainment where basically speakers are picked and you go along and you have 20 slides and literally they're ch changed automatically in six and a half minutes. So I tell the story of Mikey Fontaine. It normally takes me about 45 minutes. I put on a show, I take my time. Mm. I have to tell this story in six and a half minutes. But not only that, the night that I do it at Pecha Kucha, it's at Cape Town City Hall. There are 1,500 people what? in the audience. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I and I hope, I don't know if Phil's listening, but my best mate, Phil, brilliant. He's so laid back. I sit there in the front row before my time comes on. And he said, I said, Phil, have you seen this audience? He said, what are you worried about, Dean? You do this all the time. I said, Phil, it's the, it's the Cape Town <laughs> City Hall. Nice it's 1,500 people. people. So I'd already practiced in the day and I kept getting behind and I was getting more and more stressed. So I thought, do you know what? I'm just going to trust this. So with a couple of brandy and cokes, and you know brandy and cokes yeah. are our medicine yeah, yeah, in no. South Africa, <laughs> I get up on the stage and thankfully the guy before me, he was probably one of the most boring speakers I've ever heard at Spectacular, <laughs> thank goodness. And I started off probably with brandy and coke inside me with the first line, good evening Cape Town. And I thought, here we go. And I just spoke. And do you know what? It was word perfect. I kept up with the slides. And at yep. the end, I said, enjoy your break. And I left that stage. That was probably and the moment. Boom. There we go. <laughs> and it was Brandy and Coach that did it. Well, there we go. <laughs> Oh, Dean, it's been fantastic to yeah. have you on the show. I don't know if there's anything that we've left out. You were, there was so much to talk about oh, as well. What a joy. I'd love to come back. And, uh, you, you were ha absolutely, and I'm sure we're going to be um, uh, one of our, our hubs we're going to do. Uh, we, we need to have a show from you every now and again, especially if you've been traveling around and your history and your journey with this, um, with, with this uh, thing that you're doing with Adrian Gardner Super. as well, um, writing the history here. I absolutely love it. 
And uh, thank you for, for being such a great ambassador. Is there the last lot of comments? Uh, there, there, there are some more comments. Let's have a look at some of the comments. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, as they're coming. Uh, this uh, the quick. Uh, this is your website. Um, this is my. This is my Facebook page, yeah. which now has seventy five thousand followers and growing. So if you want to <laughs> see, a, if you want to see the speedos or anything like that, away you go. Um, we can even wave at ourselves in the. On we the can website. even wave at ourselves here. Yeah, okay. There she is. Oh, there's your baby. Dog. And you can see here she is again. She's go. off. And Gary, don't yeah. go down to the speedos. Please. Oh, go, go, oh, Gary, do it, do it, Gary, go. Oh, there she is. There she is. There we go. There we go. There we go. I don't want to put anyone off their dinner. Um, but yeah, that's my Facebook page. So if you don't, if you don't already follow, please do. I try to put yeah. something educational on every day. Oh, that's the website. That's my website. Um, the tagline: "The man who brings history to life." And I believe that history is one of the most important things we've got yeah. to, to tell stories. It's all about telling stories. And, sure. and and for me, I can reach a reach a wide audience through the likes of you. Yeah. There's Gareth Cliff. I did an interview yes. with. That's all all the wow. media work we've done. Um, and it's it's not been an easy journey. It's yeah. taken time. Um, we are, we're still we're still growing our audience. And it's stressful. I mean, sure. you know, to do these sort of Gary yeah. Cliffs yeah. is also he's, he's yeah. quite hectic. You know, yeah. he's yeah. Uh, so you've got to be out there and and and, um, yeah. and you've got to take that that uh, the risk. No, you've got to you've got to you've got to take the risk and uh, and and I will travel Adelaide. back to Adelaide. I will go. And if yeah. anybody anybody would like a, a like a signed book as well, of course, just contact me through my uh, email address, which is yeah. dean at dean .co .za. Um, and I'll, and I'll sign sign them for you. But no, it's an absolute pleasure to be here tonight with you, Gino. And, and thank Gary for all his hard work. It's a pleasure. I've, I've never known such a hardworking guy in the background there. I, I see. There, there was a there was a comment there. Just I just spotted a comment there from Greg. He, 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 he said a couple of. Here he is. Um, yeah, there there he is. is. Gary. <laughs> Gary. For a bloody change. Here I'm he a, is. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm running the camera right now, so uh, um, I'm, and I'm, I'm not here. But I just wanted to say what a pleasure it's been to meet you, Dean. Dean, finally, because Yolandi, as I said, uh, um, Yolanda Bukani. Thank you, Yolanda. 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 Yes. Um, and. Um, and Dean was so enthusiastic, and I could hear within within a minute or two of talking to him that that spirit of, of loving the Eastern Cape with all of his heart, which is something that you know, Spot is uh, is sure. a, a, it's something that that, that dri has driven us since the uh, yeah. the, the, the day we um, uh, started. we started. That he shares that same passion, uh, and as a um, uh, as an entrepreneur uh, in a, in an in an industry. Um, like being like being an, uh, being an author, um, he managed to create multiple streams of income uh, using social media, uh, using taking his um, his role as an author and understanding our culture so uh, very amazingly, and then representing even within one month, representing the beauty that is in um, in in the Eastern Cape. And if you go onto his website um, mm. or you go onto the Facebook page, you will see him traveling around to all these amazing places in, in, in throughout PE and documenting our stories. And, and that's Cape, I mean, but, but, but just, just being that, um, you know, get, getting it out there in such a short period of time as well is amazing. It's, a, it's, it's incredible. No, and, it's, um, a, it's a privilege. Yeah. When you've got such beautiful places and you've got such great people, it's, it really is. And thank you so much. And how much do I owe you for that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and one last thing. I spoke about the spirit of, of, um, of collaboration. Um, and um, the amount that Dean uh, has taught us over the last two days and the ideas we've managed to share and the way we've managed to just in such a short time uh, share our platforms and uh, reach out to Dean's audience and um, introduce Dean to um, to our Gino Spot Eastern Cape audience as well. Um, it's such a lovely symbiotic uh, kind of a relationship and it's something that we're definitely wanting to develop in, in, in Gino Spot. We're wanting to create, Gina mentioned earlier, we're wanting to create hubs where we um, mm -hmm. where people like Sandy Coffee, for instance, uh, she will be uh, uh, dealing with the really, really deep uh, issues. Uh, the last uh, uh, so uh, the serious, serious issues. Serious right? issues. Yeah, but in the last um, couple of shows, we've covered loss. Yeah. Um, we've covered aging. Um, aging. Yeah. Um, uh, and 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 those kind of so so Sandy's got. 
um, some amazing um, uh, guests lined up, and she's going to be doing. Um, uh, uh, she's got um, uh, the Thomas Shepherd, Thomas Shepherd, Thomas Shepherd, the worldwide head of Volkswagen. He was, of course, head of Volkswagen here, and, and he's gone on to become the worldwide head of Volkswagen. Isn't that incredible? From PE here as well. And, and, and we can spend some time to get some time getting to know him. Uh, you know, uh, and that's good. So, so it's behind the scenes. It's a it's a, a bit uh, a bit of a different take and uh, and Dean thank you for being so being prepared to share uh, some things that are unusual and um, and are unknown about your life no, but, um, yeah. yes. but can I just say from my point of view guys I'm not just saying this because of your kind words in all my experience of, of, of dealing with sort of media and things I mean what you do here is spontaneous it's creative mm. is that there's an energy and I know having spoken to people, as soon as I came to Port Elizabeth, your names came up. The <laughs> fact that you, you know, and it was, I suppose it was inevitable we were going to meet. Yeah. But, but your professionalism, how we set this up. I mean, you can't see, ladies and gentlemen, but here is a wonderful uh, studio. And it's, mm -hmm. it, and, it's, and it's authentic, it's real. It's not, it's not, uh, yeah. it's not we, we didn't script any of this. No, um, no. I was scared to death that Gina would ask me to sing tonight. That was the only thing. But, uh, yeah, we, we, we're going to do, well, it. We were gonna do it. an Englishman in Paris. No. <laughs> but, uh, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't buy it. Yeah. It was when you asked me to do it in my Speedos. That was the, that was the limit. I wasn't going to do that. And, 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 and one last thing. Um, uh, the the last um, two or three days uh, have been uh, quite an adventure because um, because I, I've I've inundated Dean with ideas uh, in terms of what exciting things we can do um, and one of the things that we are entertaining is uh, is having Dean run one of these portals for us um, and uh, and in that what we what we're hoping he'll do is he'll continue to tell the stories of the Eastern Cape. Mm -hmm. uh, and he will continue to celebrate this amazing place that we live in, that we've all chosen to live in, for a good reason, and and, and that those of us who, who, who live here and love the Eastern Cape uh, know that we have the most amazing lifestyle, uh, in, 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 despite, the, uh, despite the issues we have to deal with, the most amazing lifestyle in, um, yeah. in we live in the Eastern Cape. Yeah, and we're surrounded by beauty, and we're surrounded by wonderful people, as you've mentioned so, so far. So to all of you that uh, that support uh, Gino Spot, and for all of you that uh, uh, that, that share the uh, share the, um, the the posts, and mm. uh, and if you can uh, do, um, if we can ask you to do us one favor, and that is, if you love the Eastern Cape, uh, can you share this video with um, uh, the, share the the, the 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 link? It's it's gone. This this has gone live now. But it's going to the YouTube um, link. Yeah, the, there's a YouTube. Mm. It's on. You can look on YouTube and you can look on Facebook, and it's linked to the top of Dean's page. So, uh, so if you share uh, any of those uh, those links with with friends, they can get an experience of the Eastern Cape, uh, and they can can Gina spot, mm. especially uh, expats and and people who've, who've loved who've uh, left and and and, want, and feel the need to also uh, reconnect because that, that's that's also what this is about. It's all about a reconnection, you know. Um, and, and particularly people who've, who've been for a long time, and it's, it's great for them to. We, we've got guys uh, uh, that, that come on regularly that, that really enjoy that, that, uh, that reconnection from the UK, from New yes. Zealand. Yeah. I know uh, Ronald Minar must be out there as well. <laughs> Ronald, all the way, he wakes up early in yeah. New Zealand to watch the show. Yeah. I love that, and, and we can always try to uh, sort of bring it, bring it all back to the Eastern Cape in some, in some way. So I, I've, I've surprised Gino because this was, he didn't even know I was going to come out. Uh, <laughs> Because I don't, I like to be behind the scenes. That's the thing. Yeah. But um, I'd like to thank you, Gina, for um, for uh, when COVID first hit, um, uh, we were completely decimated uh, as a as a uh, as an entertainment company. And Gina had the um, he had the foresight to on day two of um, of COVID to start entertaining people in his kitchen. But, My but, wife didn't like yeah, that. Yeah, and, 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 and the videos were and the videos were crappy and the um, and the sound was all over the show and uh, and and we had that uh, amazing uh, he had that amazing spirit and he's got that in that uh, that spirit that never dies and and, and, and and this is a guy who um, who just you can never get him down. I mean he, he bounces back from from everything. And um, it was his unbelievable fortitude and that kind of stuff that got me uh, through those first months of, of COVID when I, when I turned into, yeah. uh, into a hermit. Uh, yeah. and, 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 and we've been building Gino Spot from that same spirit of uh, genuinely wanting to um, uplift our community from, from, from the bottom of our hearts because we found our meaning in, um, 
in, in, through Geno Spot. And we found our meaning by being able to connect with you guys. And we found our meaning by be, being able to facilitate you connecting with your own friends and your own mm. friendship, friendship network. And, um, and that's made the world to us. Uh, it, it really has. And it's that same spirit that we are uh, moving out of COVID now. And, um, and we're going to be building something really strong here. And I'm yeah. looking forward to, uh, to being able to celebrate life again. We've yeah. got, a, got a fantastic sh new, sh new show coming up. And yes. It's going to be called Super Lacquer Summer. And it's going <laughs> yeah. to celebrate everything about, um, uh, about uh, regaining that, 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 yes, that spirit and that momentum and picking yourself back up again and starting to enjoy life. Yeah. Um, yeah. And to, sh to shake the, um, the foundation, uh, the, the, the way we used to be passionate before we started getting all defensive, we we're gonna we, we were all going back into that time that yeah. time again, and we need to reframe uh, reframe our experiences and uh, and and learn from the, yeah. the the best that we can, and that's uh, and that's the spirit of Gino Spot, and that's the spirit of co uh, collaboration that we're gonna have through partners, and um, we're gonna offer up opportunities for uh, for. Uh, uh, other people like um, uh, Spa, who've, who've been phenomenal to us. Yeah. Um, uh, Angelo from Olympic. Uh, uh, this is um, this is extra on the end of the show, and I know yeah. I know that uh, that um, everybody uh, can 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 get to, to listen to you. But I'm using this uh, as an opportunity to to also thank first of all Gay De Brain from Fiction Leads. Um, yeah. Uh, to, 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 to let you know what happened, uh, Gino started the, the show by himself because we were in lockdown. I couldn't even come here in the, in the, in the initial mm. thing. And, um, and Gino approached Gary DeBrain and he said, um, I've got this idea. Um, and Gary DeBrain bought us the equipment uh, right up yeah. front at that early time uh, du during, uh, during COVID mm. when, um, when everybody was so shell-shocked. and it's taking a risk, you know. I mean, we, we didn't know what, what we, we had, were getting into, but, that, but that, we, needed, we knew we needed something to, to get started. And, that's uh, right. And you really bought in at that early time, so, so and, all kudos to Fitch and Leeds. And on, after that, something amazing happened as well. Uh, we've had uh, Gina and our relationship with Spa has go, goes back years and years and mm. years, and, uh, and uh, they have been so good to us, and they are a company whose, whose culture... Um, has always been to try to find a win-win, um, and the reason the spa that spa thrives and does so well is they uh, encourage their um, their individual um, um, store owners to mm. have their own sense of identity and put yeah. their own their own selves into their uh, into their uh, branches, and that's why spa uh, uh, is. Um, very successful. Yes, yeah, we all uh, consider Spa to be the centre of the hub of our um, of our mm. communities and our suburbs. You yeah. know, and, and that's and, and that's because they have that incredible uh, um, uh, philosophy that runs through their entire um, company. Okay, when we walked in to Angelo's office um, at Spa. Yeah. Uh, Angelo said to us, uh, first of all, he, he made, he made the, a point to see us straight away, and he said to us, Gina and Gary, um, I know you guys have been hit badly by COVID, so, and I know you're coming to present something to us. At this point, we, we, were, we had this idea about, um, yeah. about doing the show, Gina, yeah. and we, still didn't, we were, still didn't know where it was going to go or what it was going to be. And Angelo said, before you carry on, okay, um, whatever idea you pitching to to uh, you're going to pitch to us, yeah. we are, I'm going to support it. Yeah. So I'm yeah. telling you that friend. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. And and, and 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 in this in this day and age, uh, what company does that yeah. for you, for you? And you know why they did that? They did that with that same sense of a spirit of collaboration mm. and, and, a, and a true spirit of um, of wanting to help uh, and uplift our community and. Um, yeah. And 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 yeah. so we are so eternally grateful to Spa and to Fitch and Needs and to uh, and to Grace that's given us this wonderful food here. Uh, yes. Grace from Fat Cats, um, uh, you know that it, it's so very very much appreciated. And uh, because and Nicola from Nicola Amobia, from Amobia, Amobia who's, 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 who's been jumped on early as well. We, she, she said, "Come on, we, we, we're going to do this." So we, we are head, heading into a new uh, a new phase of the, of the show, and and we are going to continue this, and we're going to make it better. And um, and we're gonna we're gonna spend more time on on the shows preparing them as well. Um, so so we'll, we'll probably we'll probably will end up doing a, uh, 
well, once, twice, twice a week we've been doing now, but we, um, our main show is on a Tuesday. Uh, we will add in the, the, the Thursdays as and when. And, um, that, that, that's right. Uh, yeah. and, and another thing we're going to start doing, uh, we're going to start uh, creating, because um, we've done, uh, over, Gina's done over 300, 300, uh, 300 uh, in, uh, uh, interviews, which means that we've had the privilege of being able to document uh, put a put a stake in the ground and document the, uh, the 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 accolades and to celebrate. We've always taken the approach of celebrating uh, the um, those from mm. those of us who who who've made extraordinary uh, contributions to the Eastern Cape, and and, and those of us uh, those that we know that are, are our characters and our storytellers and are the ones that um, mm. the people that um, that. Dean uh, goes around the, the town, yeah. uh, the town's interviewing. The, uh, mm. He sees the history through the characters and through the people, yeah. and 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 he uh, and Dean uh, uh, then offers an amazing window um, into our culture from a from a different perspective. Um, and we're going to be hoping to bring those stories uh, to to yeah. you guys um, uh, through uh, the history portal, through um, through Keen like Dean. And we're going to be uh, pro providing opportunities for other companies and other uh, uh, individuals who want to get involved um, to help grow this project and to, uh, and to grow the collaborative spirit of this project yeah. uh, and, to, uh, and to build this into something far, far, far greater and more meaningful. Um, for our community, and we're going to uplift um, yeah. the Eastern Cape in a real way, mm -hmm. and uh, that's our goal. And yeah. I'd like to once again thank you all. And I'm going to go yes. and you can go and do and the competition go back, now. I'm going to go backstage. And yes. do the competition. Also, thank one, you. one other thing that we go, we are going to do is we're going to make a physical. There must be a physical uh, um, uh, get together that we're going to have as well, which we we are uh, are looking at planning too. Um, and and we, we we need to figure out exactly what it's going to be. But it's but we need to get this community together in a. In, in one of our big buildings in this in the city as well, so that'll be fantastic. The last comments and yeah, okay. Quick, quick last of the comments. Oh, so Daniela's fast asleep. She's still asleep. Is she still asleep there? Then uh, your little turtle. Yes. Uh, 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 Garth Webster says development of those small dorpies is all about passion and vision. You're yeah, right, great. Garth. Totally. He's in the he's in the property trade as well. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, the drinking holes of EC. I'm going to ask a question now, <laughs> and if if somebody answers the question before we get that that uh, thing up. Uh, uh, Greg Smith sent me sent me a whole lot of questions here for, for people who, who know PE. Yeah. Um, how many burgers could you buy at the hamburger hut for at two a.m. for twenty rand? He says. I want to know the answer to that because I think you can work it out. <laughs> if you can, uh, send me the answer and and we'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll try and organise you the, uh, a prize. Uh, God bless the command. He hasn't had electricity for about two weeks. Oh dear, you know it sounds like load shedding there. Uh, Ronald, Ronald Manor, morning. there he is. Morning, Mo morning, Ronald. guys. He says he's all the way from New Zealand. Have a shower, please. Yes, please. Chris S. Uh, sorry, never updated, updated my profile. What an amazing check. Thank you very much. Michael Clement, he's on the beachfront here. Love okay, that. Thank great. you. It's pineapples because of Bathurst. You see? Yes. Bathurst. The pineapple here. Yeah. Christina here from the UK. Hello, Chris, uh, Krista. Uh, oh, the speedo is where it went viral, says Philip. <laughs> Not sure about that. <laughs> Not your baby, she said. <laughs> oh dear, I don't know about that. Oh, thank you guys. And, no, uh, uh, yes, competition time. All right, competition. so it's competition time. There's nobody that's answered the question yet. The, uh, the answer to that was the Rio Hamburger Hut was a Rio Hamburger Hut, and it's, it looked like 10 Rand. So, <laughs> this is four burgers. Two burgers. Did we have, have we got a, a winner? So the answer would have been two burgers. Yeah, Here we got it, we got it. <laughs> oh, see, he's one of my students. Monroe, one of my students. Oh, he's of the class. He Good knows about, obviously, he's been drunk at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> well done, Monroe, you got the answer to the question. Uh, Benjamin Kelly, four burgers is wrong. <laughs> you might be right with the price, but it has Rio was 10 rand. Oh, it's 10 rand or Rio. Thank you so much for Wow. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, everyone. And we'll see you on Tuesday, I believe. Yes, Tuesday will be. Next Tuesday, we'll see you online. Woo! Cheers, guys. Thank you to Spa. Thank you to Fishing Meats. Thank you to Zoomobia. And Grace and Fat Cats. Love you. Relax, sit down. Coming out of PE Town. Drink, find the
shot. Never mind your liver, get to Gino's spot. Gino's spot. Get to Gino's spot. Gino's spot. Have a laugh, have a giggle, and exercise your middle. Have a Gino's shot. Gino's shot. Get to Gino's spot. Gino's spot. Get to Gino's spot. Gino's spot. Have a laugh, have a giggle, and exercise your middle. Get to Gino's spot. Gino's spot. I could have warned you, you're...